Right, okay, this week's Street Talk then, and if you've been following our Street Talk shorts this week, you'll find that um, we, we weren't really blown away by much this week. Um, I think I think it started stronger and it just got a bit gradually worse as the week went on. Honestly, tonight's episodes, we, we both kind of turned to each other after it, after it finished, didn't we? And we're like, that, that was that was dull. I, I, I don't know, but no, it started off started off well, so um, it's not all going to be moaning. I'm sorry for those people who like the rants, but um, we're going to start off by talking about the Look Who's Stalking storyline, Daisy's stuff. And we have then got the Scylla Chinchilla Killer story, which um, had a couple of unexpected twists and turns. The <laughs> extremism story is next, followed by Jacob's Dadda and um, the Gematronomy Gematrimony story with Gemma mm. and Chesney's wedding. There was also a few little bits and pieces today with Todd and Devon Burney, not enough to warrant a storyline title, I'm afraid. So, um, Gemma, I'm going to pass over to you because you volunteered to synopsize Daisy's storyline. So what's she getting up to? In my mind, Devon Burney is somebody who insists on putting the cream first on the scone. Do you think? Devon <laughs> Burney. Oh, Devon. Actually, I don't know which way around it is. It doesn't matter. Right, the stalking best, story. The only, the only way to do it is to put jam first, by the way, just in case you wondered. Look who's stalking on Monday. <laughs> Christina uh, breaks the fourth wall by saying that breakfast at number one is like being in a kitchen sink drama. Which that was is an what, interesting start to the week. Which is what um, William Roach will always insist Coronation Street is. It's not a soap. Yeah, no, no, it is. If you ask him, he d- he will actually. <laughs> I think he's beheaded a man once for saying. They that. don't have soap operas on Coronation Street, so everyone should just turn around and what are you want about. Anyway, is, this, is that a Dutch thing? She's looking what. You know, she's been in a canal, hasn't she? In Amsterdam, as Christina. She, uh, yes. Christina's looking through a wedding magazine with Daisy and talking about hats and things. And Daisy gets a message from Justin saying, oh, oh it looks like you blocked me, so whoopsie do. Never mind, don't worry, I'll set up a new account. And she I, blocks that as well. As, as much as I am enjoying this storyline, and I know it's important for the storyline... I'm getting a little bit fed up at this point of Daisy's phone dinging and her going, ooh, it's a message from Justin, block. I mean, it's the same, she's acted out the same actions like five, six, seven or more times this week. Yeah, and also I have to say, I don't, if she's as popular as the show makes out she is, I don't know that she'd notice that many, like, it wouldn't register because we're not that popular but the my, when we post something on instagram or something the phone dings for quite a while afterwards and you wouldn't you don't pay attention to every single interaction yeah that's if true, somebody's actually. like sending you a message not that we get loads and loads of messages but you wouldn't necessarily pick that one out of a no of a crowd of people also saying, put your phone on silent girl I don't get put your only old like no offense only old people have their phone <laughs> with a noise on it that seems like a kind of dated thing don't you think yeah. I, I thought that was what the youth do now they put their phone on silent like I do I don't know what the youth I'm do young. but I'm young. I'll tell you, tell you about a new piece of technology that I heard of today I don't know whether you know of the like this. So that somebody at school's getting married and um, their, their husband to be would like to get a smart ring that sounds. <laughs> that I've never heard of this thing States before, but as 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 their wedding ring, they sick. want to get a smart ring, which apparently apparently like tracks your steps and all that. It, I, no, I, I, uh, okay, ever floats your boat, but right. I, I don't think I'd fancy Michael's that. Michael's reserving the right to, to say whatever you like. If it was an Apple ring, I'd be all for it. Of I'm course, categorically but... going on the record as to say that a smart ring is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> if you're going to get married, don't get your ring as a smart ring. I it's going to be obsolete gonna, that's in exactly, five years' time. Exactly. Unless, unless your marriage is going to last five years, in which case, perfect. <laughs> okay, Daisy's trying to set, sort out freebies for this wedding through her social media prowess. Next job, she wants to try and get some free flowers off of off of Tracy because, you know, she did so well with the uh, engagement ones. So mm. why not try for the for the wedding ones? And she says, right, D- Daniel, it's your job. And he reluctantly agrees to have a go. Never send a man to do a woman's job because he completely flaps um, it up. Are you saying it's a woman's job to get flowers? Are you Sexist? saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a massive. <laughs> Thank sexist. goodness because I don't, I, don't, know. I don't think I'll be able to do that. I don't one. know if you've listened to the past ten years of this show, but yeah, I am. <laughs> right. So he goes into the florist and he asks Tracy, and sheepishly says, "Oh, we'll promote you and your shop." And and Tracy says, "Oh, you want my kidney and all." It's got one previous owner, but there's still plenty of mileage in it. <laughs> I like that. That was a good line. That was quite funny. So it categorically says no to that. Thank you. 
Daisy goes into the bar and she's fine. She finds herself. She's got a free wedding dress. I wouldn't oh, go with the one that she was wearing on Wednesday. Wednesday's episode. No, mm. but she she gets to pick from a choice of three. <sighs> What's that? No, I'm just like so, like honestly. If you think you can find your wedding dress in three dresses, you are. How long did it take you? It took me quite a long time. But we had a very small budget. That's now, trouble. that is a woman's job. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> get your own dress. Yeah. Get your own dress, <laughs> don't ladies. Don't get the groom. Although, don't tell the bride. Yeah, that's true. Mm. So, Christina has a look at them and, and thinks they're a bit over the top. And Daisy says, that's the point. <laughs> and uh, Daniel lies and says that uh, Tracy's thinking about the flowers. And... <laughs> this is when Tracy comes in later and I love this scene. She comes into the shop and she says, oh, can I have two wines, please? Into the, into the, bar, into the pub. Into the pub, yeah. And um, she, she takes some fo- a photo of them. And then when Daisy asks for the money for the wine, she says, I've already taken a photo. I've put it on my social media. That's payment. And, and Daisy's like, oh, yeah, I see. And uh, then Tracy says, I'm not a mug. You're not getting these flowers for free. And uh, that's not how you pay for things. Which, you know, fair enough. That Although a- I will say one thing. I do get a bit annoyed about obnoxious um, business owners who think that influencers don't actually benefit their company at all. It really annoys me when you get these obnoxious people going, somebody asked me for a free blah, blah, and I told them, no, and here's our email chain. It's advertising. If you don't like, if you don't believe that it holds out value for you, don't do it. I don't but think, it's like, what? I don't think they, uh, Tracy would have said no to any kind of, you know, mates rates or whatever no, for the I flowers. Agree. But the fact that they I were asking for the whole cheeky. caboodle. I think she's been massively cheeky, but whole, I also do... I also think that there's a massive amount of misogyny involved in taking the mick out of influencers because on the whole they are young women who are who have their own small businesses and some of them do take the mick, yeah for sure, but a lot of them actually provide value in return for free av- it's advertising. Yeah. It's just a different kind of advertising. Yeah, well, this is one of the things that I'm really enjoying about this particular storyline. I like the Sorka stuff, but the idea of a, like a social media funded wedding is something very obviously very different for Coronation Street, yeah. but it, it fits the tra- the character yeah. of Daisy just perfectly. I'm, yeah. I'm really interested to seeing what she man- manages to hodgepodge and cobble together by the time uh, May comes around. But yeah, that that, that thing with uh, Tracy there, that any character could have done it, but... Tracy's it felt perfect. just right for Tracy to do that really snarky move. And what do you mean? I already paid for it. Brilliant yeah, stuff. Yeah, I thought that was really funny. And and it was also like, it wasn't immediately obvious what she was doing. I think you twigged it first when yeah, we were watching it. You were like, I know what she's doing yeah. here. And I was like, what? <laughs> Good stuff. Continue. Thank you, Michael. Back at home, Daisy has a go at Daniel for not telling uh, her the truth about what Tracy said about the flowers. And, uh, but it doesn't matter because she got flowers from somewhere else for free now. And then she gets some more messages from Justin and she just blocks them. Need to point out at this point, also, there is a report button that she never uses. I think her finger hovered over yeah. it briefly today, didn't it? Although, I mean... I report people for less on Twitter, I'll tell you that for nothing. Yeah, but every so often I'll go on Twitter and on the notifications it'll say, oh, some you news think... about the account that you report on, oh, Gemma, what have like, you been doing what, now? What's this? And I'll say... I don't remember. Gemma is like always reported to people. Um, I don't, what, what would it do though if Justin's setting up lots of different accounts and he gets reported? Are they just going to say, "Oh, we'll ban that account," and then you can set up another one, or can they do more about his IP, IP address, address and his emails and everything? Luckily, or... I've never had to. I've never had anybody do this, but um... nobody report us to find out. We don't want to no, know. They don't report us. Don't stalk <laughs> us. No. Anyway. But send us chocolates. <laughs> Wednesday. On Wednesday, Daniel's agreed to go to this wedding fair with Daisy, but then he gets called into work. He's like, I forgot I have a job. <laughs> yeah, well, Daniel, teacher's strike was on Wednesday, so... Scab, mm. scab, scab. I had a great day on Wednesday. Daisy's Wednesday. not too happy about this, but she says she's going to take Christina and Jenny along. And then she says, I'll film the whole thing and I'll show it to you and you have to watch it. <laughs> that was fun. And this is, a, this is the point that you turned to me and said, oh, I wonder where the wedding fair is going to be. <laughs> Might it be at Chariot Square, perchance? <laughs> and, uh, it, it was. Yes, it was. Tensions are rising between Christina and Jenny and then Daisy gets another message from Justin and she goes into the kitchen and, and Glenda follows her. She knows a little bit about what's going on and she says, don't, yeah, don't let it get to her and she's trying to help her out and... Um, 
in the bar later, Glenda says it's clearly he's she's got to you. Maybe you should just come off social media. And this this is like this was a great point to raise her because a lot of people are probably going to be thinking this at home. Well, you know, she's encouraging him. She's she's bringing it on herself. Oh, she should be on social media. Who does she think she is? You don't need social media, X, Y, and Z. But this is just another way of people acting as though women can't do something if a man's gonna have a problem with it. You know, women can't just avoid being in public in any capacity because a man's gonna be crazy. Well, it wasn't ju- it wasn't a man at this point, was it? They tried what, the Justin? Week- not a man necessarily. No, 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 no. I'm saying that it wasn't it wasn't a man that was telling her to get off social media. No, I'm not it saying. At this no, point. Course, later, Michael, but later in the week, idiot. it was Daniel. No, I'm, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying it was a man telling her. I'm saying society in general, men and women, will say, "Oh, you shouldn't have been on social media," or "What were you wearing?" etc. 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 I mean, I they, they, they in this case, it literally is kind of partly Daisy's livelihood, isn't it? Yes, she's it's got her, her job, job at the at the pub. But she must have a pretty decent revenue stream coming in from all her socials and it's everything. It's her job, so. but she doesn't need the excuse of it's my job. It should also be a question of it's actually part of the way society works and I shouldn't have to not be on social media just because a man's going to do do something that's unacceptable. Why should I have to change myself mm. because of what this guy's doing? And I don't care if it's a man or a woman. People shouldn't be forced to change their whole life because somebody else is... Yeah, no, I agree. I don't think that she should But I, I think it's a, good, it's a good point that Glenda brought it up, because I think a lot of people are probably saying the same thing, especially older people, maybe, Yeah. to, you know, to stereotype again. But perhaps if you're older, you don't appreciate how online a lot of younger people are. Yeah, it's, it is and Daisy's life. And she it's... shouldn't be... For, like, if, for example, if one of us... If one of us was having an issue with somebody on on Twitter or whatever, we couldn't just stop going on social media. No, or if somebody it... said, "Well, just stop doing the podcast," then it's like if somebody was yeah you know, sending. A... Well, what can we do? Yeah. No, we're not going to stop doing it. Mm. It's like saying stop being the mayor <laughs> or stop being a councillor. There are so <laughs> many, this is like the third time now that a woman has been involved in the in the public sphere, doing something that's attracted male attention of a negative type actually it was female attention in the case of Sally what happened with Sally which one it was, was that? the sister oh yeah yeah um and, and has been told by it by a guy or or a woman hmm. stop doing it because it's your own fault yeah I don't get you never get a man being told to stop doing x y and z on this program I think it's partly though because Coronation Street likes to show the strong woman and they like to be able to show the characters standing up to their their spouse or partner or whoever it is that's yeah, saying it. Yeah, but they don't it, all the time. They, they don't always oh, all the Gary, time. Oh, Gary, if no, you but... don't want to be blown up in Ukraine, maybe you should stop being a mercenary. Have you ever <laughs> thought of that? But yeah, with with Daisy, at least they are, she is saying, no, I'm not, I'm not giving it up. And, and she's throughout the whole week, although she's had a few wobbles, what I've enjoyed about her is she's saying, I'm not going to let this get to me. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to show this guy. No, that, I think it's good. Uh, but my only criticism to me, even though is it, is a bit. The my only criticism of it is that it does it does kind of come across that she's being materialistic and that I don't want to give it up because I don't want to give up my freebies. I don't want to give up the attention, etc. It's not about that. It's about being told you have to change your whole life just because. Yeah, Justin's the one that's in the wrong. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Right, so... So um, she's saying, I'm not going to give it up. Yes. Then we've got Christina and Jenny taking pot shots at each other in the bar, and Daisy's like, you know what? Um, grow up, and she gets mad, and uh, Glenda tells... She she flounces off, and then Glenda says, oh, she's got this guy who's stalking her, and maybe she's upset about that. And uh, so they go in to apologise to her, and Daisy says, too late, I'm going by myself. A little bit convenient. They, 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 obviously, for storyline purposes, they needed Daisy to be going along to this wedding fair on her own. I do, en- I have been enjoying uh, Jenny and Christina at each other's throats, but it just, yeah, it felt like a bit, how can we make it so that she is in this circumstance? So she goes to the fair, which is... Uh, um, Chariot Square, of Chariot course. Chariot Square. Where and else? she's looking at the dresses, she's taking selfies... Uh, Gemma and Chesney have also uh, gone along and they're talking about wedding tattoos. 
Oh, which yeah. sounds like, about as good the, an the idea as a... wedding tattoos, wasn't it? They said, and so when you stand next to each other, bum to bum or whatever. What's it say? I'm with stupid, and then I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> anyway, so Daisy goes into the changing room and tries on one of the most awful dresses I've ever seen in my life. And uh, describe this dress, fashion, fashion. Well, it's two different uh, colours to start with. Yeah, it, there was like an ivory on the top and white on the bottom, or, or, or the other it way around. It was ivory on the on the bottom, and it was a mermaid style dress. Which was, um, which is the hip hugging flippers kind. and all, and then it has a, a seam along each side of the hip, but it was an external seam instead of an internal seam, and then it had like rivets down down the seam. <laughs> what the hell? This has been just attacked looked, by a welder. It just looked like a ninety. You know, like how in the nineties everybody had rivets on things with laces going up and down awful and then the top was fine but it didn't go with the bottom because it's a different colour I mean I, I'm not a fashionista as much as well you know everybody but even I took a look at the dress and was like that, that doesn't look right and I will say no wonder they're giving it away for free behind her was another beautiful wedding dress and I hope this is the one she wears in the end and it was very very princess grace like because it had a sort of a high neck long sleeve lace top with a big bouffante kind of a tulle, big skirt, mm. like like Princess Grace. So maybe she'll go for that. I don't know. But the one she wore, throw that in well, the bin. The, the one she don't wore has anybody, been sullied by Justin's eyes, Don't hasn't let anybody it, wear so. that. So she comes out in the dress and it's, uh, after being told, your fiancé's here, turns out it's not her fiancé, it's Justin, the fibber. And he says to her, this may be the one chance I get to see you in a wedding dress before our big day. And and he, he acts all confused and says, "Well, you told me you told me you were going to be here, and uh, you knew I'd be watching your socials, and you you sent me the message there." Yeah, see, he's he's, uh, he's taking, taking every it, yeah. post that she puts on as a personal invite or secret message to him. Yeah, um, which is why I was a little bit surprised why at the end of tonight's episode, maybe this is going to happen next week, that when she took a selfie of herself with the. Um, the, the invite or what was yes. like a mock invite so, was it a save the date or an invite so yeah uh, uh, one of the other I don't remember surely he's hey, gonna say it. oh he's she's telling me to save the date uh, you know that so. don't put I mean look there's definitely a lot to be said about how much you you know women and anybody should be free to do x y and z but at the same time you have to protect yourself a little bit and you shouldn't put your address or your wedding date, or a lot of things probably that we've done on this podcast, you shouldn't put that out into the public because it can be used against you. I mean, with, if it's a wedding, anyone can come along to a you know to a church we were, wedding. If we were going to get they? married, and we were doing this podcast, I would not tell anybody what the date was until it'd gone. Oh, would you? No, I wouldn't. Good job we're already married, then, isn't it? I just think it's a bad idea mm. well, unless just... you want to invite somebody. <coughs> Particularly, then you can invite individual people, yeah. but you don't just put that information online. What do you think would happen if Daisy, like, put a post on her socials on her send PX or whatever, saying like, "I'm being stalked. There's a creepy guy." You know, would he would he get that as a direct message, no, and would it like, rally her supporters around? Don't forget, this is the issue that she's going to run into here because she's already done that when she outed the DJ and said that he was a creepy stalker and everybody rallied around her and said, yes, he's a monster, oh, yeah. he's a monster. Now she's going to, if she ever goes up against Justin and says, Justin's stalking me, he's creepy and weird and he won't leave me alone, I'm sure the reaction is going to be, oh yeah, what, like this guy? There, there is a bit of boy who cried wolf with that, isn't there? There is. Which is a, it's exactly what Hope's experiencing this week as well. Yeah, so I think that <laughs> was quite... The girl who cried slap. That was quite a clever... Mm. quite a clever thing to put on there to um in the future maybe they'll use that I don't know but anyway Justin's like yeah well you told me you were going to be here and here I am let's let's have a toast and he gets them champagne and says I'm going to save you from Daniel he's so controlling don't worry I won't let him hurt you and she says listen I love Daniel I don't want to be with you and he won't listen to her and she says go I'm going to call the police and she he says to her True love's worth fighting for, Daisy, and I'd die for you. I'll tell you one thing about Justin. He's a creepy weirdo, but I do like his voice. So loyal. I, I, I think he's got a, <laughs> yeah. a nice accent. Yeah. Um, I, I also want to just give props here to the storyline, too, for making Daisy incredibly clear. So she can't be blamed in the future for trying to be nice. 
because as women we always talk be nice placate people and part of it is because as women being nice is highly valued and we're taught from a young age to smooth the way and be kind to people which i think is a mistake don't be kind to anybody <laughs> um and the other thing is that she is um being yeah being very direct with him yeah she's not leading him on in the slightest she's telling because, him it's he's telling him where to go yeah because but. women are women are like that for two reasons the first of like <coughs> said, is because we're taught to be nice but secondly because it can be very dangerous for a woman if 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 she wasn't in chariot square if she was alone with him now it would be very it would be a good idea and very tempting for her to placate him and say justin look i know Maybe we, you know, but I'm mm. not with you now. I'm with I'm with Daniel and maybe in another life, etc., etc. Because men are really dangerous and women are scared, rightly so. And sometimes women will be nice to a man because they're scared. Well, I think, I mean, in this case, it's very clear that Justin is... Not listening to anything. He's, no, he's not. And he, he's completely obsessed. He's made up this story in his head. Delusional. That he compli- when he was saying about, oh, it's for our big wedding day, Daisy... I was, yeah, he's like, he, he's in a, he's living in a fantasy world, isn't he? Yeah. And I think if she gave him anything that he could have latched onto like that, that, um, yeah, that would been have been a, a very, mistake. Very big but mistake. But it would have been something that a lot of women would have done. And yeah. I probably would have done the same thing. When you're, when you're confronted by a man who is being threatening, you, you are, there's, they say like it's when you, you're scared, it's flight. Uh, fight, 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 or, fight or flight mm. but it's also freeze and fawn and freeze is obvious and fawn is what a lot of women do Brianna Windass now <laughs> fawn is where you you know try to yeah. Yeah. ingratiate yourself yeah so back at the Rovers Daisy's told Daniel everything very refreshing and um, he says well, maybe you should stop being on social media and she says no what if it gets but what if it gets worse says Daniel Glenda comes over and she's got a bunch of lilies and it's a funeral arrangement. For some reason, she thinks this is a good idea to give to Daisy, but, you know, I'm not going to question the great Glenda. Daisy takes it as a message that Justin would rather see her dead than have her marry someone else. So they take them back home and they're all really sad and they're very worrying about what what they're going to do when Tracy comes in and she's like, oh... <laughs> Got my flowers, did you? <laughs> I didn't. No, I didn't really get what was going. On. So well, Tracy, it was, she was like, yeah, she was just basically saying, I'd rather do flowers for your funeral than your wedding. <laughs> which I, I was, which uh, can I just say, from a murderer, would be more scary than from a stalker. Yeah, that's true. No, I I thought that that was kind of an unnecessary extra bit. And I have to, to also honest. add, those lilies were absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I would have put them in the bin and those castor oil. Uh, yeah, take him over to Scylla's grave. Leaves, yeah, why not? So, Christina comes over to number one to apologise to Daisy and says, I've made my peace with Jenny, we're not going to fight anymore, but I think probably I should stay away until closer to the wedding because I don't want to fight with Jenny and I think it's a bad idea and also I don't want to be involved in doing the wedding stuff. It's boring. <laughs> Daisy goes to the pub and tells Jenny that Christina's left and Jenny says, oh, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to drive her away. And Daisy says, you're the only real mum I've ever had. That was and nice. And then da- Jenny starts crying she and they did. get a hug. She, she, she wells up. She tears up. That was lovely. I really moment. like that little moment because, yeah, yeah D- Jenny would, would be feeling a bit threatened. And although, you know, you can't replace the biology of your genes from your real mum but yeah. a real mum is somebody who's there for you when you're growing up yeah and that's what jenny was to daisy yeah and i really um, like the fact that she acknowledged that well yeah it's, I, I kind of imagine that jenny has seen daisy as a bit of a surrogate daughter but has always of kind of is. as hoped you know does she yeah you does don't she think her, about I me imagine, am i just stepping on christina's toes yeah, or whatever i would imagine that she felt yeah i can't overstep my mm. my boundaries here but i like that yeah i mean let's just just forget the fact that we didn't even know that Daisy existed for the first, what, five years of Jenny coming back into the programme. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so outside the pub, Daisy sees Justin and he is delivering a parcel to number five. 
Um, he is now a delivery driver. Because he was listening to our bonus episode mm. where I said that there should Craig should be a postman. <laughs> um, <laughs> I still stand by that based on how he reacted to Daniel and Daisy in today's episode. Useless. Right, so Daisy sees Justin delivering a parcel to number five. Daniel realises that it's Justin, starts to chase after him, but he drives off in his van. And Daisy's panicking because he think, she thinks that Justin's got this route on purpose so that he's got a reason to be around her all the time and now she's scared to leave the house. So on Friday, Daniel tries to call the courier company to tell them that this is an issue and they say, well, we can't reveal information about our staff because of privacy and and Daisy's like, I'm not going to let this get to me. I'm not going to let this troll into, to ruin our lives but I am also a bit, bit concerned. Then Justin is delivering another parcel later on. I'll tell you what, he should get a job with Argos. <laughs> I just imagine him delivering Argos parcels. <coughs> I don't think they let him. No, I don't either. This is what I think. This is why I don't think he's a he's a postman, because I think that the Royal Mail would get annoyed. But somehow Coronation Street's okay to p- depict a teacher as a serial killer, but not a Royal Mail delivery driver as a stalker. <laughs> So anyway, Daniel confronts Justin in the street and uh, he says, look, I've got to work here. I didn't mean to hurt anybody or scare anybody. This is my job. And Daniel tries to tell him, social media isn't real. You back off. And Justin says, my mum's got cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember how he brought it into conversation. But <laughs> my mum's got cancer. You can't be mean there. to me. And, da- and Daniel's like, oh, well, cancer. Oh, you said the memories, C word. Memory flashbacks. Oh. Come to ca- come to the cafe with me. <laughs> Let me bore you of the story of Sinead's slow demise. I oh, know you don't say cancer around Daniel because you have to listen to a whole thing about Sinead. Yeah, well done, Justin. So he tells in the cafe later. Daniel tells Justin the whole story about about Sinead and how he she died. He says I understand what it's like to see somebody die. He probably missed out the bit where he was necking Bethany in the ginnel just days before. Well, maybe <laughs> this is why he can sympathise with Justin. It's like I know that you just want to go shagging it out, <laughs> but it's your mum, so that's weird. <laughs> so anyway, just, he's like, I know it's it makes you feel weird and confused, and you do something strange, but you know, Daisy, what you feel for her is not real. It needs to stop. And Justin says, okay. Is that just Daniel excusing himself for snogging Bethany, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, when people it's have cancer, you just, you just don't Go know what you're doing. One. You can't control your actions. You got, yeah. He's like, have you tried having a baby with your mum? Because <laughs> that helps. Justin creeps up to Daisy, who's in the rover's backyard, and, tell, and he texts her, doesn't he, before he appears. He's like, oh, I'm coming to visit you, and then, I can see you. And then he says, oh, I spoke to Daniel, and uh, sorry that he, um, I'm sorry that, you know, he's getting in the way of our love, but I'll back off until you get a chance to tell him and end things with him. <laughs> and Daisy's like, oh my God, that's not exactly what you're supposed to have got out of that conversation. So he. Well, she's probably also fairly annoyed that Daniel went and had a conversation with Justin. Honestly, Daniel was given two tasks this week: get the free wedding flowers and stop this man from stalking me. (laughs) And what has he done? Neither of them. Invited him for coffee. (laughs) So inside, Daisy and Daniel reflect on what's happened, and and Daisy points out she's like, "Do you not think it's weird that Justin knew that?" talking about cancer is going to push all your buttons. He, It's like he knows everything about us and he's researched our lives and he knows exactly what to say to get our sympathy. And Daniel says, ha, 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 that doesn't seem likely to me. Okay. Do you think, do you think he has? Because yes. it's, I mean, yes, it, okay. Justin, it is true that Justin's mum is... Is, is it true? Is, yeah. Why? Because he was there at the Just oncology. Just because he was sitting in a hospital that waiting That would be a room. good twist if, if his I mum don't was think, fine. I don't think... I think his mum is fine. Or she's already dead. I don't know. Oh, I'd like that to happen. I th- I think he's lying. I don't think there's anything wrong with his mum. Ah. But where would he have found out about Daniel and I Daisy? don't think that... It's all probably from social media. It's well, bad. you can find out quite a lot more than people expect you can from what you what clues that you give. Mm. On social media, unfortunately, but it doesn't mean that you should be a victim of crime. So, 
D- D- Daniel says, okay, well, let's go to the police. So they go to the police and they've put their top man on the case. <laughs> that, this is how you can tell how seriously Weatherfield police consider this particular case. Cyber like, crimes. I don't know how Craig you can deal with it. <laughs> Craig knows what online dating is. I saw him on Tinder. <laughs> right, so it, Craig's on the case and he says, can't actually help you because he hasn't committed a crime. Being I went annoying, to the shop earlier and bought a packet of ginger nuts. Do you fancy one of those, Daniel? Being annoying is not a crime. And buying people flowers is not a crime. And hanging around people is not a crime. You need to give a... You need to give, a, like, a list of all the things that he's done to harass you um, so that you, you can use it as evidence in court. And Daisy and Daniel are not very impressed. And she's like, I'm going to keep coming back and I'm going to keep telling you and I'm going to keep doing something until you do something about this, blah, blah, blah. To be fair, I know we do rag on Craig and everything, but this probably isn't a million miles away, I'm kind no, of guessing, with from this. what the police would actually say in this situation. Can I just say, I, I, I think this is frustrating for Daisy, but at the same time, I would hope that if, if somebody went to the police and said, this woman sent me some flowers and she keeps asking me questions and hanging around me, you wouldn't just immediately get banged up for it. No. And they do speak to him later in the episode, don't they? We don't see it, but um, we, we see this is the same. It doesn't message matter, that Daisy gets that like, he's been questioned. If you're being harassed by anybody for any any reason, or your neighbours are annoying or anything, you have to do this. Mm. And this is really hard, and I know it's difficult, but this is what I said before, also the same about if you're a patient, for example, and you're having difficulty advocating for yourself at the doctor's, say. You have to keep a record of every single time you talk to somebody and what they say and what you say and the symptoms, etc. This is the same thing. Yeah. You have to advocate for yourself. You have to stand up for yourself because... It's not always an easy ride. And it's not fair. It isn't fair. It's not fair. I don't know how long. But you have to do it. You have to do it. How long do you have to do it for until the police say, okay, you've got enough evidence now? Well, it would have been nice if Craig had made that clear, wouldn't it? Mm. So she says, I'm going to do that and I'll keep coming back until you do something about it. it." Is it about as long so that this storyline can go on the the back burner for a little bit and then the story block comes back in four or five weeks and then, uh, then it's like, oh, now I've got enough. Right, so they go back to the pub and Glenda says, here's an envelope. Um, it might have uh, fallen against the kettle, but I was just trying to check to see if, if you had any bad bad juju from it and it's fine. And Daisy says, you don't have to ask. You don't have to open my post. I- I'm okay. And it's a in- wedding invitation sample and Daisy loves it. I don't know why, because I thought it was horrible. Yeah, you didn't, yeah. And they take oh, a photo of it. Impressed. I mean, we made our own because we couldn't afford it. Oh yeah, we did, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. We were so crafty. I some... remember your dad got so annoyed with us. Did because, he? Yes, because we took so long to make them. You had very busy lives. Well, you had like little pastel colours, didn't yeah. you, on a wedding invite? He said, what did he say? J-F-D-I, Mike. What's that? Just effing do it. Did he? <laughs> yeah, he did. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> and I was like, oh God. Because we sent out, we sent out Save the Dates, didn't we? Yeah. And to tell everybody when it was and when it would be. <laughs> But we didn't send out the Sorry, invitations for ages. And <laughs> he was really getting funny. really wound up. I don't remember this. <laughs> we got there in the we end. We got there in the end. And we, I mean, we got married and the, it all worked out fine. So anyway. Oh, thanks. Thank, thank, thank you for that um, assessment of the past, past uh, 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> D- Daisy loves it. She t- takes a photo for Instagram. And Daniel and Glinda give her a look. And she says, what? I'm going to be normal as possible. I'm not going to change anything. Yeah. And uh, then she gets another message from Justin and he thinks that Daniel's coerced Daisy into talking to the police to warn him off. And he says, don't worry, it's not going to affect our relationship. I know Daniel's making you do it. I still care about you. And uh, Daniel, Daniel says, right, well, you've got to take the photo, take a snapshot, write it in the diary. He gives her a pen and paper because he's Daniel. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, she and she has to log it, and you can tell she's she's kind of resigned. I hope she and does, annoyed. and it's not just going to be Daniel the one that's nagging her about it. Because up until this point, she's been saying that she's really determined to, you know, get this, I think this matter was, sorted. Sometimes I can I can see that it's just a way of the writer saying we're just demonstrating to everybody that this is going to be a drag. Mm. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I, I don't know. I, got I love more... the way Daniel gives her a leather-bound notebook. Like, uh, you don't... You can just... Okay. 
all right, Daniel, <laughs> do it that way. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm very much enjoying this story. I thought that um, today's episode, it, it didn't appear, it, it did have new things. It wasn't exactly the same, but there wasn't the kind of the surprise or the, the shock of like him turning up at the wedding fair or anything like this. It was just kind of bog More standard. Yeah, he, he's he's creeping up on them, and and we we had to have a way to show that the characters were going to start making logs of everything. So it was just a bit like, Meh. but um, yeah, the, the the rest of this week and everything else to do with this story is cool. I I I like the wedding fair. I thought that when she was there in the changing rooms and the woman outside was saying, "Your fiance is here." I mean, I don't know whether we were supposed to be surprised when it turned out that it was actually Justin, but it was felt like it was pretty obvious that was going to happen. But uh, I, I wasn't expecting just how obsessed and delusional that he would be. Like every time that he comes on screen, I'm like, are you, are you for real? But it's also making me wonder, like, how, how realistic and how true to life is his behaviour? Because when, when he's saying, oh, yeah, we're going to get married, oh, yeah, it's going to be lovely in the dress with me. And I'm thinking, do, do, do real stalkers, do they really do that? And then I think they, they probably do. You know they do. I don't. I, I don't know anything about what a real stalker is like. You know that. that how can somebody be so delusional? Yeah. No, but I'm so saying. No, okay. But then I realised no, that's probably true. Listen, you do you not remember? At one point, I went to Japan for work. I do remember that. I was very jealous. And somebody came on that trip with me because they found out. Yes, I'm yes. starting to remember this And now. they kept, and I didn't want them to, I didn't want them to come with me, and I didn't, they were creepy, and they kept stalking me and hanging about. I'd forgotten about that guy. Yes, exactly. And uh, he kept turning up at the hotel room and trying to come into my room and trying to hang around with me. And in the end, no matter how many nice, polite, and this is what I was saying earlier about women, trying to diffuse situations by being kind... I was like, you know, I, I don't want to, I wouldn't do this by myself, I don't want to do this, blah, blah, blah. In the end, I had to literally scream at him in the corridor to leave me alone before... I'd totally forgotten about before that. Before he would Is get that... that I did not want his company in any shape or form. Was that after you were married to me as well? No. Ah. Wow. Well, um, yeah, so it, it was... I, I think that the guy playing him, um, Andrew Still, I think he's called, is doing a, a very a convincing job. And listen, I, can I just say... I just want to say also, I do sympathise with guys who, who perhaps are a neurodivergent who try to pick up on social cues that they don't necessarily understand and when women are not direct, it can be difficult to pick up on subtle clues <laughs> and men aren't the best at, you know aren't the best at certain times and you know also can i just point out we're coming out of decades and decades of romantic movies and rom-coms and stuff where the man would like basically stalk a woman to try to win her affection to wear her down and it would always work Mm. and in the end it was like she was just trying to play hard to get because that's what women have to do Mm. there are so many mixed messages in the world Four guys, and yes, it can be complicated, but he has, Justin, has been told very directly that this is not acceptable and she does not want him to do this anymore. And so this is not that, this is not that, Mm. okay? But yes, it can be difficult. Do you think we're supposed to have any kind of sympathy for him at all? No. Just with the the dying mum thing? At the moment, no, but I think there will be some kind of sob story... Perhaps he'll say his mum has died. I don't want this to go down the route where he becomes like proper, seriously creepy, stabby, stabby kind of obsessed with her. Because I think, I mean, maybe I'm just always seeing the good in people like I do with Max a little bit, but I think he could be a nice guy in there. There's plausible deniability for him just not getting the message. But that doesn't make Daisy any, feel any safer or any less harassed. No. Yeah, and I and I feel feel bad for Daniel and all of this. And as maybe well, because... maybe um maybe Justin is lonely. Maybe maybe his mum is dying of cancer. Maybe he just wants somebody to talk to. Mm. It, and there are lots of men like that too. You know, there's a whole group of incels. You know, who who kind of turned against women or obsessed with women because they don't have any female friends or contacts or or any dating life. Tell you who I think we should hook <laughs> Justin up with. <laughs> 
Mary. <laughs> <laughs> she, we know that she likes a Scott. She's obsessed with Adam Barlow and, you know... She's maybe not taking no for an answer there, but maybe if Justin were to come along and say, oh, you're also sad and lonely, want to hook up? I think, I think that, that she Mary might go for it. is an incel <laughs> of her own sort. <coughs> well, I'm just saying, maybe maybe that's the happy ending. I don't think this story. is going to... I think this is going to turn into a glasses will situation. How did that... Oh, yeah. Well, he's just, like, kidnapping, kidnapping her. I, I, don't want, I don't want it to be, although in my head I'm thinking... That probably could be quite exciting, but I, I'd, I'd like, I'd like him to understand. Oh, it's a little bit. It's all. It is also a little bit uh, caramel, isn't it? And yeah. she ended up, you know, yeah, she I ended mean, up just being taken back to Ireland in the end because she was having mental health yes. issues. Uh. And you know, I've I've been very gender biased here and spoken generally about this being a woman and man thing, but we acknowledge also, like you say, that that you know it can happen the other way around. It's just not less slightly more scary t- for women when it's a guy and you because you know that they could kill mm. you mm. yeah well i mean we all and, remember you know, when maria Carmel stalks just, tyrone carmel just like grabbed a baby <laughs> and, and <laughs> does, she doesn't does. even have one does she daisy so she don't care no no um <laughs> What else? Are we, um, so this wedding then, I kind of suggested on the Street Talk short the other day that maybe it's going to end up being a lot lower key and, and twee. So it's kind of like, oh, well, it's not it's not to do with all the um, okay. all, all the all, all the freebies and, and, and pizzazz. No. Without wishing to be, without being too judgy, I'm just going to say it makes a rod for your own back. If you're going to make everything into a, a funding opportunity and a freebie thing, you're making so much work. You're not actually getting anything. This is the thing that people don't get about influencers. You don't get it for free. You get it in return for quite actually a lot of work. And, you know, when when you see Daisy take a nice picture of herself with some flowers outside of a shop and you will think, oh, she just got those flowers for free. That's so easy. I wish and simple. She could do that. No, all the work that Daisy puts into it is building a following, building up those... Um, relationships with others, uh, with other influencers, mm. and and getting contacts that way, making contacts with people who can supply her with the goods, and then producing content that s- uh, satisfies her sponsors. And you know she's got to put up all her makeup, she's got to get all the nice outfit on, she's got to pose with and get take nice pictures and do the videos and stuff. It's not free. It's not freebies. And so she's actually setting herself up to work on her wedding day, which sounds to me like an absolute nightmare. Mm. So if so, that's what she wants to do, God bless her. But if I was her, I'd set up a fake wedding and do the fake wedding yeah, and yeah, then have yeah. my nice wedding do you, a, on a different day. Do you think that it's going to be the big grand affair that no. she's hoping it is? Gonna... I think she's going to not do it. I think... I'm kind I don't of, want them to just like run away and have another, you know, pagan and ritual in want, Victoria Gardens like you did with Sinead. Though. I also don't want it to be a cop out as if to say that Daisy's wrong for wanting all this stuff. Like everybody should have the wedding that they want. And yeah, maybe she is materialistic. Yeah, that so I, there is there is <laughs> absolutely nothing wrong with a bride wanting to have a, a huge, a extravagant massive, wedding. Gorgeous. Surely that's what lots of young girls dream of. Well, I mean, um, Daniel's not going to sniff at and, it either, and, and all also, of her guests are going to enjoy themselves. Yeah, and and she she is one of the most glamorous. I cannot wait to see um, it. Uh, honestly, good looking actresses that's been on Coronation She's Street for a long time. Cool. So I mean, if Coronation Street want to be a uh, yeah, Extravagant. yeah. Then, then absolutely they should. But um, yeah, I, I do wonder whether it's there's going to just be a, a lesson learned in the end. But it'd be a shame. I don't think that she should have to compromise uh, based on this. And Daniel just needs to stop being a bit of a stick what in she the needs mud. To do. I, the, the last thing I want is Daniel saying, "Well, you know, I did say all along that you, you don't need all this razzmatazz to get married." I know. Yeah. What she needs to do is just like do sponsored posts about wedding things, and then use the money from that those sponsors to mm. fund what she actually wants yeah because when you compromise she's gonna have to compromise on lots of things like her wedding dress she gets one of three mm. that sucks like you said how many did, how long did it take me it took me a long time because mm. i and i could choose from any one well kind of not really because i didn't have very much <laughs> money but um, I had a sample dress in the end of the night. Yes, you did, you did. From Stuart Parvin, who actually designed the Queen, the uh, Queen's yeah, yeah, dresses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, name yeah, drop, yeah. name drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, wonder, yeah. And, and I must have mentioned this somewhere else in it, maybe in the Gemma, I must have been in the Gemma story, that Gemma and Chesney now look like they're going to try and get married on the same day as Daisy and Daniel, don't they? And they're going to have a much lower key affair at the Rovers. I just don't So want I wonder whether Daniel and just the Daisy will be piggybacking on their wedding or something. I just instead. really don't want it to be a... Oh, wow, look, Gemma and Chesney did theirs with love and Daisy and Daniel did theirs out of materialism. Soulless. And no, so I don't they're think it will evil be. and this wedding's better than that. I hate this. Whenever you also want to say, whenever you go on Reddit, they'll always be like, how much did you spend on your wedding? And all these people would be like, I spent £3.50 on Greg's at my wedding <laughs> and we're still married and my friends spent £100,000 on their wedding and they got divorced two weeks later. It's like... Just do what you want. Just hey, what, don't compare yourself. Do you think Gemma's considered matter. a Greg's catered wedding yet? Because if she somebody gives her that idea, I think that's um. Case. Sorry, she can that's only have. She can. She can't even have a Costa themed wedding anymore. Why? Um, she can have an EE themed yeah. wedding or a co-op themed <coughs> wedding or an Argos themed wedding. No, I, I don't think. I, I think. However or whenever the wedding happens, I think it will be beautifully done, and I think we're going to have some lovely teary Jenny. Hopefully oh. Christina as well. I'm a bit gutted that Christina seems to have gone away because it seems like she's only been here five minutes and I did like the, the sniping, although I suppose there's only so much of it you can take of that before it gets a bit boring. But um, yeah, Jenny at the wedding is going to be, um, yeah, I think it's going to gonna give us a little bit of a lump in our throats, isn't it? <sighs> I'm so, I'm so, I really hope that they both have really nice weddings. It just, you know, it still seems like, They've only been going out for a well, little Daniel bit. And Daisy. Yeah, okay. I'm all for them getting married and everything. I, I think they're a great couple. I've, I've done a massive 180 on them, but they don't need to rush into it. <laughs> anyway, um, so the 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 Scylla Chinchilla storyline next. Um, what? Scylla Chinchilla Killer. Thank you. What did I say? Storyline. Story. It is a story. Um, so it ruins your pun. Oh, you thank you. So we last saw. <laughs> Um, Scylla getting buried in Victoria Gardens uh, Hope giving the promise <laughs> that um, you will have your revenge and um, we get to see oh no 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 no. sorry I'm wrong that was two weeks that was a week ago wasn't it where do Hope's still grieving on Monday isn't she I just I just haven't no 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 no, no I'm wrong so the funeral was last week. I forgot what happened this week. Monday's was quite fun. And yeah, she is still grieving over dead Scylla the Chinchilla. And Fizz is like, oh God, I don't know what, I don't know what we're going to be like when I see Beth at the factory today because her dog kind of killed my pet chinchilla. And Tyrone's like, oh, I don't, I don't think that Pina actually did kill Chin, um, Scylla the Chinchilla. He's, he's, you know, she's pretty harmless. But she's a tiny little dog and I think Chinchilla's about... Half a size. We still, by the by now, still haven't come to any conclusive decision about why and how since um, Scylla died. I mean, yeah. it's, there's not going to be a chinchilla autopsy going on. I don't know if and how we're ever going to find out the truth. And I like, haven't had legions of chinchilla pet owners telling us that dogs all can kill a chinchilla just by looking at them. I don't know whether the idea of Cerberus being the killer has been brought up and whether I've missed Cerberus it or forgotten not about it. Around, is he? Yeah, yeah he's, he's been around a bit recently. Right, go on then, Some tell people me have said, oh, maybe maybe she chewed on a wire or something. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, um, Sam. Sam. Sam's um, there with Hope at the bus stop. And there was a really nice shot of the bus stop, a nice little framing of the two of them there. And he's he's giving morning tips because as they are the latest orphan to walk the street, he knows all about being sad and everything. And, and Hope says, look, I just want to get even. And Sam says, I, I don't think that's the best way to deal with grief, actually. I, I should know. I've just um, been talking to Harvey and we, we talk through our differences. But Hope's like, no, I need your help after school. I'm getting my revenge. And I'm like, brilliant, what's this going to be? So um, meanwhile at work, Beth wants to put what happened between her and Fizz and everyone behind them. Though it's not very long before she's insulting Fizz, comparing the chinchilla to a rat hanging around a chippy and everything. And then the two of them are, are at loggerheads and Carla has to come and break up the argument. Um, so they're not the dealing with it very well, particularly. So <coughs> it's then after school time. 
and Sam has borrowed Vin Diesel the Weasel for Hope. And I was like, this is this is not, this is the first outing for Vin Diesel, isn't it? Yep. He's been uh, con- he's been confined. contained, confined to the counter in Trim Up North for for all these years, and now he finally gets a taste of the fresh air. And we haven't seen very much of Vin Diesel because we haven't seen very time. much of Trim Up North. And he he was looking like he was loving it. It's been a long time since the breeze ruffled that fur. Yeah, I, I would I would have liked to have you know seen them go off on a little car trip or something and having Vin Diesel looking out the window. Because he's like, going, <laughs> um, but anyway, so so what's she up to with Vin Diesel? Um, Sam's starting to chicken out of this a little bit. He's like, I, I, I don't, like, I don't like where this is going. I've stolen a weasel for you. I, I'm out. I've done my job. And so Hope's like, right, I'm on my own with with this stuffed weasel. She tells him, this is going to hurt me a lot more than it's going to hurt you. And then she digs this weasel's um, fangs deep into her arm. And I was like, bloody... And and there's blood everywhere. I thought, wow, you crazy girl. So then she goes over to Victoria Gardens where Beth and Peanut are there. And she suddenly goes, oh my gosh, Peanut's bit me. (laughs) And and then she says, Beth, look at my wrist. Your dog's attacked me. And Beth's like, Really? That that doesn't seem like what Peanut would do. Um, Fizz and Tyrone back at home believe her, of course, and and they say, "Oh, we're going to have to take Hope to the hospital now." And and a lot of children at this point would back off and say, "I, I, I yeah, don't I love fancy that." that. Um, Good no. for her. Yeah, I, I, stick to her guns. Yeah, so but she 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 goes and has a tetanus jab. Where most kids are terrified of needles and this thing, she's like, you "I'm taking this as part of my revenge." You can't I'm doing deny it for you, Hope. I, I think she is a terrifying individual. She is, and she's only 12. So Tyrone and Fizz are a little bit worried about what if this happens again. There's this this um, rabid dog, Peanut, on the loose. And um, should we tell the police or whatever? Beth and Kurt come to the door. Beth wants to see the bite marks. And Evelyn's like, that's ain't no way. Look, get, get away. They don't want anything to I'm do with I'm surprised, actually, Evelyn is is going along with this. Yeah, that's true. I because she co- has shown a little bit of um, suspicion of well, I just want to quickly say... Veracity in the as past. somebody who's been around dogs my whole life, and my family bred dogs, and we've owned dogs, and had dogs that are quite scaredy around, think, around people, um, people are not educated about dogs there are lots of people who let their kids run up to a dog that has a thing around their neck saying don't come near me i'm scared of people and let them shove their hands in their faces but as evelyn as a pet owner if i was her i'd be saying what were you doing to the dog i I don't want to victim blame Mm. but why did the dog bite you this is this dog has not bitten anybody ever why is yeah. it's it's not a dangerous breed? There are breeds that we know are slightly more likely to to bite and and attach themselves and not let go, and that's really unfortunate. But not a mini yeah little sausage, sausage dog. dog. <laughs> I would I would be asking so many questions, and I know my parents would not have taken my if I got bitten by a dog when I was a kid. They would have been like, "What did you do?" Well, this is, you know, Fizz and Tyrone all over, isn't it? Fizz's answer to everything is, oh, but Hope's just a little girl. She she wouldn't lie. She's 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 so innocent. And, and also, I know lots of people are going to get really mad at me because <coughs> I know that people are very precious about their kids, but dogs generally, especially one, can I just say, Peanut's tiny, you would have to bend over her. If you're bending over a tiny dog and putting yourself, your hand in their face and they bite you, it's on you, and I don't care how, how old you are, the dog's scared of you. Mm. The, do, do you not think? Yeah, no. Uh, and and uh, if they should have taught... No, I, I just don't... I think that you have a bit of responsibility if you have a kid to make sure they understand that dogs might bite but, you. I mean, yeah, but Hope has got Fizz and Tyrone round a little finger, hasn't she? They're idiots. But, they, Fizz is, just seems terrified and I just to consider... Say, you're not an idiot if you get bitten by a dog in general, but in this situation, they're not asking many questions when they should be. They're, they're, they're just worried that if they um, discipline Hope in any way, yeah. that she'll you know, run away from home or set fire to something. Set fire to the dog. Yeah, so... That'd be the, bad, wouldn't it? 
I, I, although every time Fizz says all oh, that she's just a little girl, I'm like, oh, come on, Fizz. At, at the same time, you kind of can understand that she just wants to keep the peace. But anyway, um, she goes off and reports um, Peanut to the police. And, Awful. And Hope's a little bit worried at this point. Like, she's like, what's what's going to happen to Peanut? And Fizz says, oh, yeah, maybe they'll want to, to go around and ask them some questions and maybe they'll decide that Peanut needs to be put to sleep. <laughs> when Fizz was saying this, surely she should have been... She's, she's, we might not have seen a lot of Peanut on screen for the past however many years Kirk and Beth are supposed to have had her, but I would have thought that Fizz would have known better than to have believed this story. I know, listen, we've had dogs, I just want to be clear, very, very clear. We've had dogs which we know are temperamental and vicious, and they've always been small dogs. I've never had a large temperamental dog that's dangerous because that is a completely different story, but a tiny dog, we know. If you own a dog like that, you say, don't let your kids round them and don't come near. Mm. If I was a parent and my and my child was bitten and, and blood was drawn from a dog, I would say to the owner, you've got to never let your dog around my child again and put a muzzle when it goes outside. Otherwise, otherwise I'll report it to the police. Mm. Yeah, if this is... Um... She's gone. She's basically reported this dog knowing that the dog could be put down, knowing that her child is a liar. That, that's the and thing, And it's her isn't brother's it? dog. Yeah. Just just to keep her child happy and to, to try and under keep the, the peace under in these, the home. Under these very specific circumstances, not wanting to generalise further than that, I think it's clear mm, mm. that this is wrong. <laughs> so on Wednesday... Um, but I'm biased. <laughs> Hope um, Hope sneaks out to the outhouse in the back and uh, retrieves Vin Diesel where um, she's been stashing him overnight. And this is where Tyrone catches her and says, what's what's going on? And she's like, oh, Sam just, just wanted to borrow Vin for a project. He can tell she looks shifty and that wasn't the best excuse. I think she wasn't expecting to be caught here. And Sam borrowing the stuffed weasel for a project and now we're going to hide it in the outhouse in the yard. That's not really holding water here. Um, and Tyrone kind of clocks what happens. And Ugh. this is when Hope says, yeah, I was avenging Silla's death. This is what happened. I, I, may, I put the bite marks in and everything. But she does, fair play to her, feel guilty about how far this has gone. Is she going to learn a lesson from this? Unlikely. Not. But for temporarily... She's she's feeling a little bit guilty about this, and Fizz is like, "Brilliant! Now I'm going to have to go and tell Beth and Kirk that my daughter, as as they as they said, is a is a massive psycho." Thanks for that, Hope. So at the at the factory, Beth's there, <coughs> getting a bit worried about what the police are going to decide. Can but I just the fate say, of Peanut lies in their hands. I'm really annoyed at how long it took Fizz to come and tell Beth. Beth's there thinking, my dog's going to be put down. I wouldn't be able to sleep. I'd be so... I'd be like, right, we're going to go to France. We're going to run away. Fizz has to steal herself up to it, doesn't she? Yeah, but she let her sit there thinking that the dog's going to be put down for so many hours Mm. that she could have told her, sorry, it was all a horrible misunderstanding. Well, she does go and tell her in the end. I don't care. I'm (laughs) sorry. Imagine if... Imagine... You don't seem to care because there's no... Nobody's going to put a cat down... For like being an asshole or something. <laughs> oh, I, I went out with wearing my new hat and your cat gave me a dirty look and now I've got PTSD about my fashion choices. Doesn't happen. No, that's I I I I, I can. We've had dogs, and this is why I'm a bit touchy about this. We've had dogs that we've adopted um, from from the what, rescue centre that have had really bad upbringings. Like we had a dog that was beaten up as a puppy by men by boyfriends of the girls that owned that owned him. And he was terrified of men for a long time. And that, that terror sometimes translated into being aggressive. And we had to make sure that that dog didn't get approached by anybody that would trigger him. And it wasn't his fault. And he never bit anybody that he didn't, that he was a stranger to him ever. There was never any problem like that. But we always were like, oh gosh, imagine if that happened. Mm. Yeah, no, I can totally sympathise with Bess. And with we obviously, Beth. obviously worked, uh, whatever we did with him, obviously his training and helping him and stuff, all, always obviously helped him in the end, but we were always worried. And dogs are animals. They're animals and they will react in a weird way that we don't expect sometimes. And 
It just, I just, the idea of having. If I'd somebody, been going to work, you know, you're right. I would have been worried about it for hours, and Fizz should have gone up to her sooner. You're absolutely right. But I, just I still need somebody to pat me on the head and tell me that that no. my dog's not going to get put down, even though I don't, don't have, a dog. have a dog. I I just really find it difficult to like Beth in the slightest, and I'm not saying that she deserved to be <laughs> kept hanging, but. Honestly, she is she is the most Everybody unpleasant has triggers. character. And there, I, I know that there are people listening who have kids who, obviously, the trigger is their dog bites their kid, not that <laughs> the dog gets accused of biting a kid. But you, we what all, can we say? You're, you're more of a dog person than a kid person, aren't you? I haven't ever had any kids, <laughs> but I've had lots of dogs. So anyway, <laughs> um, she, Fizz, Fizz tells them what happened. It was a prank and she's phoned police to let them know and oh, everything. And Beth's this. like, what the hell? Wouldn't have it. Yeah, she she says, right, this, your girl is just laughing at you. What's going yeah. on? So she takes matters into her own hand, finds Hope out in Viaduct Street and is absolutely hideously vile and awful to I'm her. I'm on Beth's side. Oh my God. I just I can't, can't even remember. I can't remember she's it. She's just kind of screws her face up into this nice air, yeah, yeah. like she's treated her like a piece of dirt. And yes, of course, Hope needs to take responsibility yeah. for her actions. But the, the way that, that Beth, a grown woman, spoke to this poor girl is just so Can I so wonder not on. one thing? Is there something about the fact that they're in in kind of family? How are they? F- in what way are they family? How well, they? Kirk is. Kirk. They're not, no, they're not. Family, no, they're not. Are they're, not fa- they? they're not family at all. They're just no. very, very good friends. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Is there? Is there not somebody godmother? Good. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But but I think that they've. I think they've been close because Tyrone wanna, and Kirk have been friends for. for I would never talk to a child like this at all ever in my life. But I think that when you're more familiar with a kid, and also with anybody, when you're more familiar with somebody, you can be more horrible to them yeah. and expect there to be more leeway in how that's she, reacted. To. You can be you can be stern with a child that yeah. maybe you're closer to and say, look, that wasn't on. Yeah. But she was just the way she spoke to her. <laughs> and, and this is just Beth because that's how she speaks to anybody who gets on her nerves. Okay, right. She was just absolutely One thing, horrid. another thing, and this is, I'm going to retire myself. I recuse myself from talking about this anymore ever because I've only ever gotten in one physical fight in my whole life and it was about my dog. Somebody, my my dog, Sasha, was mm. having, was with another dog in a playground and they were both having a little fight with each other and then a boy came up and pushed my dog so I punched him in the face. Because he, <laughs> How old are you at this point? 15. Okay. He pushed my dog, so I punched him in the face, and that's the only time I've ever hit anybody I don't know. So I have no way of judging what's a reasonable response to anything. Mm. So I recuse myself. I just I can't I, be on this jury. I, I thought she was absolutely horrible, but I would have slapped her. Well, this is this is this is the mystery <laughs> for the end of the week, wasn't I it? Sympathise with her. Because I wouldn't hit a child, but the, I was a child at the time. She she at the at. What? Nothing, nothing. Um, so at the end, um, Hope then goes home and is just about to be told her punishment from uh, from Tyrone and Fizzer for, for lying again. And then she says, Beth just slapped me. Mm. And obviously the, the audience at the time would get, no, no, she didn't. didn't. Hope's like, I did. Yeah, I, I Are thought. Are you believed? No. You didn't believe her, but I did. I said, I yeah. if I was Beth, I, I would have slapped her. I think, I think Beth was absolutely awful Not saying that's right. But I never thought that they would actually have I'm her I'm not saying it's right. Her. Um, but I would have done... <laughs> I might have, I might have that's been really That's shocking. Really it's tempted. like Beth has sunk to a new low this week, and I didn't think that she could get any lower. I would never... Slapping a child. I would never do that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Man, I hope that... I want there to be a flashback or something for this. Now that it's happened. I know, yeah. <laughs> Do you think that you're not allowed to show kids being slapped? Oh, they'd read a clip Chesney around the oh, ear that true. time, didn't they? Yeah. Honestly, is, are there any redeeming features in Beth? Please let me know. Oh, anyway, so... Oh, oh, Michael, I can't... Honestly, would you not get physical if somebody threatened your cat? I wouldn't slap a child. <laughs> I know you have to say that. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I, I know, I know. 
Okay. This was awful. But this was so, so bad. Are we, I don't know if Listen. we're supposed to have any kind of sympathy or be on Beth's side at all. I don't, I, I don't want to. Honestly. I feel really bad now. I feel really bad. But one thing about about soaps I, I like is that people do all kinds of different stuff. And I'm sure there are loads of people who would slap a kid. I think, yeah, I think, no, I think, yeah, I'm not saying it's unrealistic. And not not lose a a wink of sleep out of it ever, ever, ever in their lives. Mm. And I would never, ever, I would never, ever hurt a child ever um, because I am a good person and I'm scared of the parents. (laughs) (laughs) But um, I I, I sympathise, I sympathise with Beth more. God. No, this is like honestly, this is this is shocking. I'm really sorry. Anyway, I've, it's so, because I had a mojito. <laughs> so um, Fizz kind of summons Beth and Kirk to the house and tells her what Hope said, and she and Beth's kind of reaction does seem to suggest that what a, what a load of bunkum this is. And Beth's like, oh, I can't believe I can't never, believe you've even never. listened to her. I'd never do that. We've known you all this time. How dare you think that I would slap a kid? And Kirk's <laughs> like, oh, well, you've been my mate for ages, Tyrone. I can't believe it. Because Tyrone and Kirk meet up in the bar later and, and Kirk says, oh, you, you should have known. You should... You'd never... How dare you... You'll be mate. Um, yeah, so at the end of the episode, they sit Hope down on the sofa and she swears that she's telling the truth, oh, storms off, and Fizz Poor tells girl. Tyrone, I, I tell you what, I'm worried that Eliza's spiraling out of control How here. Awful but despite today. all of this, you know, well, I saw polls on the internet, I think we had one on our Facebook group, I probably even voted what? it in myself, saying, did Beth slap Hope? Yeah, and I, everyone's I, like I'm saying, sure no, of did. course she didn't. Yeah. Of course not. She's she's bad, but she's not that bad. Well... Um, how bad for irredeemable for to this is not going to help her is it to, to to tell the truth for once exactly and to not be believed she's yeah she's going to come back from this and say what's the point of telling the truth yeah I don't get what I want out of it so don't bother yeah so and in, the, in the interest of being <coughs> fair and having equal treatment uh, you know I said earlier that if if Peanut had bitten Hope then she should have to wear a muzzle mm. perhaps <laughs> perhaps we should make Beth wear mittens <laughs> forever in case she she gets handsy with someone else's kids. Oh, I I really well. Let's, let's get to the end of it. I'm not going to say any. You'll feel like you're baiting me. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. So there was a little bit of this story on Friday. <laughs> a bit of an awkward exchange outside the cabin where um, Tyrone and and Fizz are there and and Beth and Kirk are there and um, and Kirk sells Beth or oh, well yeah Tyrone he's not my mate anymore I can't believe he would think the woman I loved was capable of hitting oh, a kid and oh, it was at that Kirk. moment it was at that moment I thought God, what's Kirk gonna did, say did she did she do it what's Kirk gonna say oh I, right, I don't know so Beth kind of sidles up to Fizz at work later and says Look, maybe I called may, her, may, her maybe I was a, I was a bit harsh with her maybe I had some stern words with her but that's all it was honestly and Fizz says right let's just call a truce on the whole thing come round for tea later we'll sit sit together talk it through I want to I want to have pax here so Kirk and Beth go around the house for tea they um a, a, pay, a plate of pink wafers is all it takes for um, to to break break the uh, the tension. tension there, and um, they're having a great laugh. Hope walks in. These kids on Coronation Street never seem to change out of their school uniforms <laughs> on an evening or weekday evening. Has anyone else noticed that? It's like, what should we have them wear? Just uniform. Come in. Stay in the uniform. Go to bed. Anyway, Hope's like, what what's she doing there? She couldn't believe that she's seeing this this slapper literally. Having sharing a plate of pink wafers with her mum and dad, and having She's, a laugh. She so storms sad. out. Beth's like, "Don't worry, I'll go and catch up with her." I think if I was Fizz or Tyrone at this point, I'd be like, "It's probably best if you don't." Yeah, actually, I don't think but anyway, that's right. for for plot revelation purposes, Beth is allowed to go outside for hope and says, "Look, right, I'm sorry I slapped you and everything, <gasps> but revelation. you know, you you, you see, look what you've done. You nearly had my peanut killed." And she she kind of tries to. You put it under the carpet and say, let's just forget it ever happened. Let's make up. And Hope's like, no, I'm not. I'm not having any. I'm not no intention of um of letting this drop. Actually, Beth. So um. I'm not going to say anything. I. I'm. Mm. I. I already outed myself as a terrible person. You didn't. I, I did make it clear I would never. <coughs> I would have done it. Well, you're just a very strong, keen animal lover, aren't you? Which is laudable. <sighs> I, I just um. 
I, I feel I feel really bad for how worried Beth might have been. And I think anybody who threatens somebody's pet yeah. is bad. It's bad. And, and what so, what I Hope know that did Hope's was old, terrible. Hope's old enough to know that that's she, bad. She absolutely is old enough. But She's you shouldn't in slap her. <laughs> She's in secondary school. She's old enough to know that was that was bad. That, that was out of order. And it was it was kind of fun to watch her do it and everything. <laughs> it's like, what's she going to do with Mindy? It's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's done that. But Beth was the responsible adult here. Yeah, Absolutely she shouldn't have done that. Unacceptable. You just what you I, do, what you do with children is you don't physically hurt them, but you crush their spirits. <laughs> I want to know what's going to happen to Beth when um, she gets found out because the she truth will come out, won't it? I mean, I, I'm interested. Like, is Beth going don't, to admit it? Yeah. Is she going to be overheard talking about it? Is Hope just going to insist and insist and insist until Fizz and Tyrone believe her? Yeah, I don't know. If, you know, I, you know, I. I, I, yeah, I, I would feel see red if somebody hurt my pet. But if it was my kid and you yeah. slapped my kid, she, she, I, she reported, she reported, uh, fisted peanut to the police for what happened. She, what, what's she gonna do to? I tell you what, though, isn't it funny how things have changed? Because we, you know, we're a certain age, and when we were kids, it certainly wasn't a bad thing to hit your kids. Corporal it? punishment was absolutely a thing when we were little, but my dad never slapped me around the face when I was naughty. I know, but even people maybe a few years older than us have been to school when they were hit by teachers. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, definitely. So it's really interesting to just see how it's completely changed and everybody is now, like, you can't... There's no way to to correct behaviour with physical... No, with but physical even even back in the violence. day when corporal punishment at schools and from parents, the children was the acceptable and the norm, I can't believe that, you know, a neighbour yeah, doing it to a fine. kid, even that, that wouldn't have been acceptable. I think that would have been fine. Do you think? Yeah. I don't know, I I'm think not sure. Honestly, I think that in very tight-knit working-class communities, whether or not you live in the North or the South, I think that you would have got a clip around the ear from so Mrs. So and so around the corner if you'd been caught doing something you shouldn't have been done and you would have run home to your mum and she would have said, Well what did you know, you mm, deserved it. I'll give you a maybe. clip around the ear as well. Maybe. And not saying that's right or wrong, all I'm that, noting mm, is that, the that, passage that of might time have happened. has uh, mm. made it so that this is now a, a story on a soap when honestly this would have been a line in an episode at the beginning of Corrie. Yeah. No, maybe you're right. I can right. imagine Ina Sharples, you know, spearing a child with a broomstick and spit roasting him over the fire because they put a chalk outline of a hopscotch outside of her. <laughs> outside the mission hall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Harry Hewitt's going, Well, Lucille, well, you, you know, they, they were they were messing about mm. outside the mission hall. No, I think been. that, you know, Fizz, when she does find out, has got every right to report Beth to the police. I think and to be honest, Beth has not got a leg to stand on. I do. How is do she going to get out of this? Do you not think reporting Lock everyone her up. to the police all the time is a stupid waste of time? Why did Fizz report Peanut to the police in the first place? If she thought it was a dangerous dog, yeah, but she didn't. This is my point. If she genuinely thought Peanut was a dangerous animal... But she was worried. What if she was... But she it clearly isn't. Unless has she got, we, ra- we has that. She got rabies? No, you don't have. There's no such thing. Well, I, I, I don't. I think know. she over. I th- honestly think she overreacted in the first place. I think. I think she did for, for a, drama. A tiny dog biting somebody with no history at all of of ever biting anyone before screams. Mm. What the hell were you doing to the dog today? I, I, Especially if you know your kid's been setting fire to things and been violent in the past, mm. I would I would worry that she'd hurt the dog. Yeah, possibly. And this is just me this is just based on me spending a lot of time with dogs and knowing in general they don't bite you. They just don't. I'm sorry they don't. I um I think that if Fizz does report hope I mean Report f- hope to the police for being annoying. Beth to the police um, Craig's going to be involved in it somehow and I know that that wouldn't necessarily happen in real life but Weatherfield police don't always stick to the rules about who a police officer should and shouldn't be arresting and where they should and shouldn't be patrolling and everything but um, I just think this whole thing's silly I, and it I, makes me mad I, I, I want to see her in the dock Chuck her away into prison and throw away the key. And poor Kirk, what's he going to say? He's going to, well, he's probably just going to mope, isn't he? He'll go, oh, Beth, oh, I believe you. Mm. I'm not, I'm not that into that, but. Um, 
I just more. I, I thought this story was fun. in general. I just think you don't need to phone the police. For anything that's happened in this story. Phone the well, police that's up. generally the, 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 the go-to response from most characters in Coronation Phone Street, isn't police. it? What, there's there's drug deals going on in my bistro. Shall we get the police involved? Nah, don't bother. Don't bother. The police can't do anything to help. Phone the police for Hope stealing Stephen that weasel, then, if you're going to start calling the police for every single thing that happens. Mm. That do you was... not, do you not, can you understand my point? Because I don't feel like you do. Yeah, yeah. And I'm feeling like a really awful person here because it sounds like, to me, I'm saying, slap children, don't don't ever punish a dog even if it mauls your kid to death. Yeah. No, and you're not sounding like that at all. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if it's a bit controversial. Maybe I'm just showing my age here. No, 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 you're not. I just don't think you need to phone the police for everything. No, no. I, I think that Fizz definitely, um, she didn't need to do, do that. Would you genuinely phone the police if you found out that your friend slapped your daughter? Would you not just say to her, I'm not ever speaking to you again, don't ever slap my kid or talk to my kid or be around my kid ever again? I think, no, no maybe you're right, but I think that that's... Do you not think the consequences with here With how are characters in Coronation severe? Street usually... I know to it's part of the drama. To build the drama, I know it's that part of the drama, happen. Michael. But this, the whole story is about the consequences of what you bring upon yourself if you involve the police. Because the police aren't going to go, oh, you you don't mind anymore. Okay, well, we'll just not worry about it then. Mm. Mm. Maybe, maybe they're going to avoid Beth going to the police by... Fizz, maybe she's going to do something terrible and uh, they'll have the classic stalemate of like, I won't report you if you don't report me. Maybe they're just going to keep upping the ante until Kirk gets murdered. <laughs> you slap my kid, well, I'm going to I'm gonna slap your son. Well, I'm you slap my son, I'm going to kick Tyrone at the bum. You kick Tyrone at the bum, I'm going to run you over my car. You run me over in the car, I'm going to skewer Tyrone in the ear until he's deaf. You skewer Tyrone in the ear until he's deaf, I'm going to murder Kirk it's... with a... Uh, with the bar, I'm gonna drop the bar on his face. I, I feel like your um, Tyrone murdering fantasies here have been well rehearsed in I your brain since the Alina storyline. I didn't kill Tyrone; I made him deaf. <laughs> um, cooling things just... off away from all of this. Um, trim up north because Tyrone brings the Vin sp- Diesel over to TCD. Um, returns him to David at one point, doesn't he? David's working at Trim Up North now. Maria David's... was working... No, sorry, uh, the salon, I mean. Maria... What's going on? Two salons on the street. It's not working, is it? Because it's... What... Why wasn't David at Trim Up North? Why was he doing... Um, it was Beth's hair... I don't know why I didn't even mention this, because maybe I put the notes in the wrong story again. Oh, she's got again. a haircut. She looked very nice. Um, why... 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 Why doesn't David work at his own shop anymore? I'm very confused at this. It was always a bit of a silly idea to have two rival salons going at the same time, but now it's kind of even more glaringly it's just silly. Really unsustainable. And the I issue like Trim is up north. that they've recently done up Audrey, so it doesn't feel like they're going to get rid of it. No, and and said but all... Trim up north is by far the most modern business. Yeah. To my, to my eyes. I mean, it, this is just a symptom of Coronation Street not liking change, isn't it? And saying, oh, we've, we've got to have Underworld there because there's always been Underworld for the past 25 years. We've got to have the salon there because the salon's been there since the early 90s. And Audrey had that big scene of, I'm going back to work and I'm going to raise a glass to Alfie and everything. We've barely seen her in there since. And, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I liked him up north, but it's clearly not working with both of them unless they suddenly have an influx of other hairdressery like characters on the street I don't know but anyway that's enough of that storyline let's try I'm something you're going to have to edit everything I said no out. it was fine let's move on to something a lot less controversial the Max Streamism storyline I story bet line. I can say I won't say anything that's going to upset anybody in this Mm-mm-mm-mm. no I enjoy it. it yeah I just want to say sorry if I, if I upset you General disclaimer I just for all did, of our I episodes. just did explain my my situations and I totally understand that if you you have a completely different opinion on everything that happened based on your own 
things. And also, I just want to add, if you have a tiny dog and it does bite people, you're an arsehole and you should train your dog because it's not acceptable. I've never had a dog like that ever in my life. You train them properly. It doesn't matter how big or small they are. Don't forget that a vast majority of Coronation Street viewers, when Daniel pushed Max down the stairs last year, were cheering him on. (laughs) So I think... We know, we didn't get to see... We didn't get to see um, Hope get slapped. You know, and I definitely don't... Like I said, wouldn't wouldn't have done it myself. But also, you know, if any, if if any, if any, if you do believe in corporal punishment for children, hopes are overdue, isn't she? She's been doing all kinds of naughty things. I, I do. We not, can't I, agree I, I with it. We don't on the record. Do not agree with it at all. Well, I don't. But don't push Max on says either. Max They're Dream not real. They're all characters. It's all fake. It's all fake. Sorry right. to break this to you. Max Dream is on, one, on Monday. <laughs> Max's solicitor texts David to say, oh dear, they're increasing his charge to encouraging terrorism. <laughs> Rather, what was it last week? Instigating, uh, I can't violence? remember. I don't know what it was, no, but this is worse. Something about attempted murder. <coughs> Incitement to Inci- attempted Oh yeah, murder. that was it, wasn't it? Yeah. So Maria comes in and is like, oh. <laughs> don't worry, David, he'll be fine. Arlene's walking around in a big puffy jacket, <laughs> you've written, <laughs> to get the maximum sympathy vote. Arlene like... is milking it this week. She's, she's just walking around the street going, ooh, ah, oh, I've been stabbed. Oh, everybody. I've got hemorrhoids. <laughs> oh, I felt really bad for her, but it was, it was milking it, wasn't it? <laughs> so Gail, Gail's like, oh, sorry. Um, the solicitor is around at number eight saying that the rage charges could make it more difficult for the prosecution to get a conviction. This is a good point. The the bigger the charge, the higher the threshold. Oh, that's how Toya got off last year, isn't Evidence. it? Yeah. <laughs> she was she was charged Overcharged. with um attempted murder, which yeah. clearly it wasn't. It was just a passing thought. Yeah. It's just like imagine if your kid was bitten by a dog, what would you do then? <laughs> uh right, so uh the fact that Max has agreed to give evidence against Griff is promising. So that's, you know, something to think about. And David says, well, we're going to go to trial. He's not going to plead not guilty. And Max, uh, we want her, we want you to be the representation for him. So they have a plat meeting in the pub and David asks Gail for money. And Gail's like, oh, I don't know. Gail really wound me up when she's up there. She's like, you know what? I've always thought if you're, if you're not guilty, then you don't need representation because the facts speak for themselves. It's like, Gail, you stupid idiot. Have you ever listened to a podcast in your life? Uh, well, Gail has been involved in enough <laughs> criminal activities with her dodgy family over the year that should you, be enough to Deirdre? teach her that a lawyer is um, Deirdre, probably a good Deirdre idea. Deirdre didn't do any of it. Look at that. <laughs> I can't, honestly, I want, if anyone needed to slap, it was her for that. <laughs> for saying, if you're not guilty, you don't need representation. You stupid idiot. Um, she says, if the max gets off, it's because the facts speaks for themselves, not because of some fancy lawyer. Audrey says, well, maybe I can, uh, maybe I can look into getting some money if I release the equity on my house. And Steve's like, oh no. I don't remember what happened. I know. I tried to remember. I tried to remember and I tried to look, I can't remember what the status is on Audrey's equity. But anyway, Stephen's not into it. it. Stephen says to Audrey, be cautious, these are serious charges. Plus, you know, Griff's very convincing. He used to say he's not going to convince the jury that Max is guilty too. And in fact, if Max does go down for this, maybe, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe he will learn his lesson then. I don't understand what he's saying here. Is he saying that you shouldn't ever try to help your relative because they could be found guilty. Then this is totally, obviously, obviously he is, he is guilty here. Obviously he that's is. That's the thing, yeah. So, Why should we be getting him off something that he clearly did and he needs a bit of a slap on the wrist here and learn his lesson? Yes, I know, but this is what I, maybe I'm, maybe this is showing my like <laughs> council estate roots or something, but I'm like, don't crush your relatives out to the police. <laughs> don't phone the police if your dog bites somebody. Don't phone the police if your friend slaps somebody. Don't phone the police if your, if your son incites terrorism. <laughs> sort it out inside the house. <laughs> Oh dear. David's visiting Max in the youth detention centre and David says, you're not guilty, you should plead that way and it'll all be okay and you'll be home before you know it. And Max is like, okay, good. And then Gail speaks to Maria later and oh, it's what to do it is. And Maria reminds her that Max has got herself into a lot of serious bother here, but also on the other hand, he did stop everyone from getting blown up apart from Alia, but nobody cares about her. That time. <laughs> no casualties. The- 
Nobody got hurt. Terrorism incident. So they have another meeting at number eight and Audrey's there and she says, it's not in Max's best interest for me to lend the money. (sighs) Come on, Audrey. And David can't believe it and says, this is rubbish. You're talking rubbish here. And she says, no, it's my decision. And so Dean's like, yeah, yeah, it's mom's decision. It's mom's decision. And David gets really rolled up, pushes Stephen against the wall, and they kind of have a little scuffle, like a little slap fight. <laughs> that was like an outload of nothing, wasn't it? It was just like, <laughs> oh, I got it. Just so they could have an advert break cliffhanger. Yeah, and Gail, Gail pulls them apart after everyone's, you know, decided what insurance they If Gail they can buy. pull you apart, it wasn't, You're not really you know, trying, it wasn't you? really fisticuffs, was it? No. She tells David that she was just about to give him the money, but now she's changed her mind. Are you Thanks, joking girl. me? Are you are you serious? So what? So you're going to... Right, okay. I'll take you to the detention centre. I'll sit you down. You can look Max in the eye and say, I'm not giving you any help because your dad slapped Stephen in the face. <laughs> really? Okay. David heads off to the hearing and he's like, no, don't come with me. I'll go by myself, actually. Meanwhile, Ollie is being all gothic about it, and uh, no, she doesn't want to go. She's, she's, uh, she's like looking tragic on the sofa in number six, isn't she? I'd be looking no, tragic. No, girl, I'm not going to court. I'm I'd be very gonna, tragic myself. Just give me a bit of wallow here. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> don't worry so, about me. I'm a hero, you know. Right. So in the court, we have a bit of a, a bit of a to do, don't we? Because they're both just Blake and Max are being tried together, and the judge asks them their plea, and Blake pleads guilty. And Max, <gasps> he pleads guilty too. Yeah, Blake's kind of like, he's proud to be guilty about it, isn't he? He's like, yeah, we're... Yeah, I'll do it again. We, we, yeah, we, 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 we're going to be legends, repentant, Max. Yeah. yeah. And uh, David's shocked about this and he begs for Max to change his mind, but Max won't. And uh, he gets led off. And Shane is on the phone to Max in a minute and David's telling her what happened. And... Did you say Shona's on the phone to Max? David's on the phone to David. Yeah, yeah. Shona's on the phone to David and telling he tells her what's happened. And then the lawyer comes out and says, well, you know, the worst case scenario here is he gets 15 years in prison for this. And then we get the bistro later. We've got Maria, Amy, Carla and Tracy talking about this plea. And they're all have got different opinions, which is quite good. And um, odd, odd collection of characters to be sitting on a table together at the bistro but never mind never mind um tracy's glad he's in prison because what he did to amy yeah when he spiked her drink last year yeah you've written spooked and i thought no, you meant it's just all to i thought you meant it. spooked like you went Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> david's on the phone to max later on and says right we're gonna apply to change your plea because obviously you're you didn't mean to say guilty you meant not guilty but i know it can be confusing <laughs> And Max says, no, no, I'm going to take responsibility. People warned me. I didn't listen. I didn't want to listen. And I'm going to stick with being guilty because that's what I am. So he puts the phone down and uh, David's there on the sofa, just slumped over and he can't believe this. And Gail tries to comfort him and says, maybe it's good that he's taking responsibility for his actions and it will sort his head out. And David starts to think, you know, this is all my fault. I let I let him down. I should have stopped him. I should have paid more attention to him. I've let Max down and I've let Kylie down as well. <laughs> On Wednesday, Maria tells David that she thinks it's a good thing that Max is being responsible. To me... I'd, this is an aside, but being responsible is like taking a condom on a date, not like pleading guilty to terrorism. <laughs> but hey, it's the weather field. So he, David says, I, I know what you mean, but I'm wondering, like he, he's inside with all these different people. Who's he mingling with? There are some right scumbags in there. What, you know, honestly, he's right. He could come out even more radicalised than he went in. Yeah, well, David should know. He, well, he, David shared a cell with Graham Proctor, so well, that turned yeah, out quite nice Well, you could make a nice friend, him. couldn't you? Yeah, exactly. Alia winces her way around the room. He's <laughs> just reading my notes and then realising that every single sentence that I write here about Alia is... It's derogatory. Um... <laughs> this poor girl. Ooh, I'm just coming into the... Oh, she tried to oh, save drink. someone Ooh. else's life. And she just, she oh, takes a big sip booth. and then like it all comes out, a hole in her side. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, typical. Okay, yeah. um, she sits with Dee Dee and Ryan and they start talking about wanting kids and they're not dating, are they, Dee Dee and Ryan? I think so. And... And Dee Dee, Ryan and Alia aren't dating either. No, 
No, no, oh, sorry. I thought so I thought that I saw, I think it was Rebecca who suggested that maybe Ollie has been uh, skewered in the ovaries and maybe she'll be infertile and that might be a consequence here of that. I don't know. Well, we've already got Faye being infertile. Yeah, but that's for a different reason. No, no, but... Okay, listen. Beth's getting knocked in the salon later because David's trying to do her hair, but he's thinking about Max, and he squirts something oh, on her. Oh, yeah. And, that's it. That, that and uh, she happened. gets annoyed, and Maria tells him to go home. Maria and Alia cross paths in the cafe. David and Alia. David and Alia cross paths in the cafe, and she says, look, I know, I know it's not your fault. You didn't make him this way. He's, you know, he... You tried to get him away from Griffin. It's not your fault. And David says, no, I should have done more. Then he goes home and he starts drinking whiskey. And Shayna phones him up and she's worried. She hasn't heard anything about Max. Um, she wants to come home with Lily. And David says, no, you'd let Lily finish doing her football things. And Shayna says, okay, but how are you really? Um, but he, he's like, oh, I'm fine. Just like Alia. We're both fine. <coughs> but they both have deep and dark, sad Cats. Yeah, it's sad, sad, sad for times, both of them. Um, I, I, I enjoyed this. This was great stuff. Um, Max's play jammer. Okay. Une surprise. Oh, very, very I, I, yeah, very I'd nice. like... Um, I just want to... Pleasant surprise. It's interesting. Um, I've heard lots of different opinions about this, because I was saying last week, I'm really confused about how I feel about this. And, um... I think it was Adrian on our Facebook page pointed out, and I'm not going to name specific names, but there are very high profile people because, oh yeah, that was the thing. There was that case, wasn't there, in America, that 19 year old boy. And I said, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know who it was. And I didn't, I didn't, <coughs> but I heard that there was a case in the UK. And I, I'm not going to, I haven't got the details, but it is true that re- recently a, a 19 year old man, boy, whatever you want to call them, in this country, was found guilty of inciting terrorism or whatever the charge was because he produced videos that were watched in America by two people that then went on to commit mm. shootings. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So he, so they can link him back to two people in specific instances who definitely consumed the media that he produced who then were inspired to go on to, to kill people. And so this guy in the UK has been found guilty of that offence. Mm. So given that has happened, it feels very right that Max, by precedent, is mm. guilty of the same thing. I know. And, and, you know, in previous weeks I've been saying on the podcast, oh, he, you know, he was groomed. It's not his fault. And, and I still am clinging on to that a little bit. But just to we, say... We saw him going through it. And... Just to say, what I was saying about Adrian made a point that there are very high profile people in America who have definitely influenced right wing extremism that has led to deaths. You can you can fill the gaps in here. It's very obvious who I'm talking about. People that have held positions of real power in the media and politics in the US. Are they being charged for this crime? Mm. Does this crime even exist in America? I don't know. I don't know. This guy in the UK he made this video. I can bet you it wasn't the only thing that this, these people watched. Mm. I bet you there were loads of things. Yeah. I mean, How... Blake specifically called out Max as being his yeah, he did. inspiration, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Uh, and, and yeah, to be fair, look, what, thinking about the cockroach video, that was pretty much saying squish the immigrants with a mallet, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it couldn't have been clearer, but I still, yeah. in my heart, kind of look at Max doing and saying these things and thinking he doesn't know what he's doing. No, he is just I don't repeating. Think that. You've got a different approach to me. You, you're you saying Max has been influenced by somebody else. Mm. But where does that stop then? Well, I know, I know. This I'm, I'm wrestling with this myself. I'm saying I don't think you can ever blame someone else for your own actions. I know. And I think that Blake should be responsible for his own thing. And I think that, that Max should be responsible for his own thing. And I think that if you're going to... This is my personal opinion... There sh- you should be tried for creating harmful content or hateful media or inciting people, but not responsible for somebody else's actions. Griff was, I'm uh, sorry, yeah, Blake was ultimately the one that pulled that knife on, on Alia at the end of the day. I mean, I say a lot, of, this is what worries me, I say a lot of crap on this podcast. 
am I going to be responsible for somebody like raising a really horrible chihuahua that they just <laughs> take into shops and throw at people and then bites everybody? Am I going to then, is it going to be my fault because I said it was Inciting okay? terrorism there. I don't know. Mm. I, 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 it's, I mean, I'm joking, but this, this raises so many questions, but the, the scary thing about it is it doesn't really matter what we are, either of us think. This is a real law. Yeah, the law's the law. Um, but, but when Max pl- pled, um, guilty I know, yeah I was I was surprised but also thinking oh, I, I I was on Maria's side and, and whoever else saying well he's he is taking responsibility so good for him but maybe that's just because I'm a I'm a, nice a max sympathizer but not well, yeah. not in that way but you know I, totally. I think yeah good good for him it, he does does he want to turn his life around but then also part of me was thinking is he pleading guilty because he still believes that he did the right thing by making those videos That's because a good the last, you know, after Griff was banged up, Max turns around to David and says, "Well, I haven't changed my views. I do think that um, immigrants coming to this country is bad for people who were born here, like like mm. I was." So is he kind of saying, "Yeah, guilty," mm. and I'm going to start? I don't know. I mean, it's all uh, honestly. It's really complex. He should never have made those videos, and it's discussed. The the videos were disgusting. Uh, Did not, you? Don't, oh, it's obvi- we're obviously not saying that at all and defending that at all. I just. How much did he alive. make because this is what he felt? How much did he make because he wanted to fit in? How much did he make because Griff said, go and make me a How video about squashing the cockroaches? 16, I think. Which is, old, think is not... old enough. I know yeah, it's old that's... enough. Yeah, it's not. I don't think that's old enough to be held responsible for what somebody else does. Mm. I don't know. It's really. It's it. It's a. It's one of these things where it's a strange new world. Yeah. There's there's no no nothing in our lives has prepared us for the idea that you could make a video that somebody in America then watches and shoots somebody in the face mm. and kills them. That that's like bizarre. Yeah. But you know, Max has lived his whole life with the internet being a worldwide phenomenon, and you be able to talk to anybody at any point. <coughs> Should he have? Should he be more responsible for... I don't know. Mm. It's really very tr- confusing. But I mean... But yeah, I gonna... just want to make it... I just want to say again, I think it is a very good point to say that it, by no means whatsoever is Max the only person creating extremist content, right-wing content, and some of the people are actually, you know, very high profile and are spouting hateful rhetoric and have had no consequences at all. Mm. And how much are they an influence on somebody compared to this, you know, 16-year-old boy yeah, from Weatherfield? Yeah, upstart racist. Um, is, but then, how you, can you... I mean, I it is very complex and complicated, but are, they, are Coronation Street kind of avoiding this in court now by making him plead really guilty because there's, there's not going to be a proper thing. trial now, is there? He's going to yeah, plead guilty, exactly. so they'll say, right... But they're not going to say... He's not going to be sent down for 15 years, this is, is what, he? Right, so this is it 15 is, years or what he gets off? But how on, can he get off on. if he's going to say he did it? This is my sticking point here because we we know that Max is not going... We're not going to lose the character of Max. No. I mean, we don't we know assume. this. We don't know this. We don't know what he Paddy very Beaver's well doing. could be. Could be that Paddy... You know, the same way they that did would, with... But imagine that bombshell for the Platt family. The same way what they did with Tracy Barlow. <coughs> You know, if we had been making the podcast when Tracy hit tra- uh, uh, Charlie on the head, we'd have been going, how's Tracy going to get out of this then? They're not going to lose Kate mm. Ford over this, so I don't understand. Could be, could very well be. But at the end of the day, we're pretty sure that Pat- Paddy Beaver's not leaving the show and that Max is not going to be put in prison for 15 years. The only thing I can think of is that Griff's going to return from somewhere and he's going to be like, I made him do it. Well, Griff's... Griff's- in and then police he, custody every, at the moment, every, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But he's maybe escaped, like, he'll do a... He'll do a... He'll do a Kirsty Soames, or something. Or a, oh, oh, a, 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 a Harvey. Harvey Gaskill. Yeah. I, And he'll say, I did everything, and then it'll be head vampire syndrome, and everybody below him gets away with I, I, I really don't know. I... This this is why this story intrigues me so much. I don't know how he's going to get out of this now. Isn't it and, funny? And there's nothing. I mean, Coronation Street every few years has a character in prison story, but Could be, usually yeah. it ends with they get them out. getting out again. And there's no kind of you know with Tracy, she got out of prison because of dodgy forensic or something. Yeah. I don't think that they can no. use that one again. And the evidence is there, clean as clear as day, isn't it? That he's made these videos, well, he and he if he it. says he's he did it. 
is it, will he be able to change his play? I don't know how these things work, but if he's you know trying to face up to his responsibility, there's no reason at the moment why why he should. Um, On the face of it, as far as the law is concerned, and and Max has said he did well, everything he said he did, and he is responsible. And you know we've had we had the same thing with the um the law about Kelly. And the law in this country is that Kelly actually should have been found guilty of murder because she incited somebody else to do it. Yeah, yeah. And there was a case I read about in The Guardian where somebody had an altercation, a verbal altercation with somebody in a group and that person was later murdered by somebody else in the same group and they were all done for murder because they started a fight that ended in in a killing. Mm. I don't know what I think about that, but the law is the law yeah. and so how will max the character get out of this and it's really interesting that we've had i think maybe other people don't agree some very weirdly gray moral areas to talk about in this episode it has hasn't it yeah we don't always get this kind of thing and like i said some people are gonna be like well clearly max is completely wrong or you know clearly beth should have slapped hope <laughs> whatever <laughs> It's really interesting to talk about. And i tell you one thing I'm really glad is that it's not down to me. It doesn't matter what I think <laughs> at all. I have no effect on any of this. So I feel a bit free. To... Yeah. I'm also, <laughs> you're right. I'm also loving that this is giving David at last something properly yeah, meaty, meaty to yeah. do. Like the, those scenes with Jack, with, with David in, in, the, in the house at the end in the dark and going, oh, what have I done? Is this my fault? Because all the way through the Max storyline, we were saying, David, get him away. You know that he's there hanging about with Griff. You know he's dodgy. Why are you just pussyfooting around him? And now David is getting the consequences of that. And it wasn't just a case of, oh, for convenience of the plot, David's not doing anything here, so now the plot can carry on. But he's, he is seeing the consequences of, of yeah, not being decisive in his fatherhood and, and and this could lead to some fantastic um jack p shepherd performances which we've not seen as many of in recent years i think it's you know and gail as well she's been great this week but who would ever have thought oh you better make sure that you parent your kids <coughs> properly otherwise he's gonna end up being well, yeah, quite. Charged with a crime. Yeah. You I would know. never think that was going to happen. Do you think that do you think that it is David's fault at all that Max is here? Do you put do you put much blame on him? I can't. I just how could you know that your kid was doing this? I just mm. don't like just somebody's hanging around with He was burying his head in the sand a little bit. I think if he'd have shown a bit more of an know, interest, I, he might have found something and done, been able to do something about it earlier. But I, I've always ab- subscribed to the idea that you, you can't really, you can't really stop somebody from hanging around. Yeah, but it's your kid though, so you can kind of stop them. But, but he, how, if he had listen, if he, if if David had said to Max, "You can't hang around with Griff anymore. I'm banning you. You can't leave the house. You're grounded." Max would have just been upstairs connecting with other people. Or, or Griff online. Or he would have just gone anyway. Because I think Max, I think David did, and it might have been half past the car, I remember, try and stop Max at one point. But Max is like, you can't tell me what to do. I think I just, I think this, really in, many, in many ways, this is very, very well plotted. It's really, it's really it's all understandable coming together how nicely. this has happened. Mm. And like I said, you know, I've said this many times before, you don't need to sympathise with somebody or agree with them to understand how they've come to they're the where they are in life yeah but understanding them is the first step to preventing it from happening again mm. but i don't know what what could they, i don't know um just before we move on to the next story because it feels like this street talks running long which is which is great this week lots to talk about i can't believe that shona made vocal of a voice appearances in two episodes this week Julia Goulding just refuses to go away when she's on maternity leave, doesn't she? I love her. But last time she, after she got shot in a box, we still got to see clips of her in the hospital. Um, and this time it's like, yeah, just being on the phone. I think she is like the the model by which all maternity leave cover-ups should be based on in Coronation well, Street. 
if you know if, if for anyone who doesn't want to or can't do or whatever stay away for a long time because they've just made it so smooth both times really really from nice a viewer's to hear perspective. Her. yeah yeah from yeah exactly who knows what's going on behind the scenes but from a viewer's nice perspective where we don't have to suddenly just lose a character and then we never see them again um for, for months on end we yeah, should ge- we should just computer generate um maybe that's how they'll do it on maternity. that's how they'll do it in the future yeah, put, put Robo Show in, um, in there. Just quickly, this is what I was looking for on, on Facebook, in case you wondered, what? Michael. Leah has pointed out Alia's boyfriend, Matt. Remember him? Hunky the, Matt, yeah, of course. No, the um, the uh, the guy who... Is this his name, Matt? Yeah, the, Hunky the Matt. The one who was the supplier. Yeah. Where the hell is he? <sighs> Can't stand the heat, baby. Get out of the kitchen. Mm. He doesn't care about her, does he? I don't remember he doesn't what take happened her off with holiday. That. Was that just to get Ryan jealous or something? Oh, I don't know. Boring. Well, he certainly doesn't fancy her anymore now she's been blown right. up. Jacob's dadder storyline now. So this ran across the whole week. Um, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm not. I'm not into this story. It's kind of dark and gritty and usually I don't mind that kind of thing, but it's, it's still feeling very much gangsters by the numbers on Coronation Street, I'm afraid, and is giving Nick a chance to kind of go, oh, oh, so squinty, oh, God, what can I do? What a conundrum, what a quandary I'm in. And it's giving Leanne a chance to go, oh, excuse me, rah, 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 get on her high horse. Damon, I think he's doing a fairly good job of being a an intimidating gang kind of boss guy, but... It's it's really not ringing my bells, unfortunately. So um, what happened this week? Um, Do you want me to make you a cup of tea? And then no, it's fine. I, I I didn't want to complain or apologise or anything for my bad voice. I'll just go and have a bit of cough medicine because I'm sure that will instantly do, do the trick, and then I will talk about the Jacob's <laughs> Dallas storyline. I'll, I'll be right back. I'll we'll be right back. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm back. Tell you what, um, there's one thing that I'm gonna miss about having this sore throat and losing my voice is not being able to have the cough me- medicine anymore. It's really, really tasty. You shouldn't drink uh, the cough medicine. If it, yeah, I mean, if, if this was the drugs that Damon was pushing through the Vista, I'd be like, yeah, fair play, Sign bring it up, on. baby. Um, so anyway, Damon is uh, is, is uh, helping out at the Vista on Monday because they're, they're going to have some kind of... It was, was this the big bruisey brunch? He told me that this yeah. is what it was. And, and he's going to put on some banging tunes because, as we all know, he's a DJ in Ibiza. So Leanne seems pretty confident in him. Basically, through most of the week, Leanne is just fawning over how wonderful Damon is. Um, until the very end, of course. Um, there was a little scene as well in that episode where Amy's talking to him, saying, oh, we haven't heard from Jacob. Um, Leanne comes into the bar and's going, wow, it's banging, everything's so busy here, wonderful. Nick, no, sorry, Nick, <laughs> again, this is all he does all week, it seems to me, is just going, oh, oh, I don't like this, oh, I don't like how much Leanne is really into Damon, oh, what a, what a difficult situation I'm in here. Um, and then the party keep, keeps on going way into the evening, Sam's hanging out with Damon on the decks. Literally, Sam, Sam has, you know, in, in many ways... He has got very narrow interests, hasn't he? And there's some things that he just gets completely obsessed with. But also, he gets new interests just out of nowhere. Like, gets locked in a van with a radio on, suddenly he's a football fan. Goes to the bistro and there's a DJ there. He's now obsessed with DJing. He's incredibly interested in almost anything, as long as it's in service of a storyline. Yeah, one might say that. But anyway, um, Nick tells Damon to back off with cozying up to his family, and Dave is like, whatever, I'm not scared of you in the slightest, mate, sorry. So on Wednesday, as I say, Sam's now obsessed with DJing, and, uh, and also Damon, it seems, um, has worked his magic on Sam as well. Nian thinks the whole thing is completely charming, and Nick says, just shut up, Sam, go to school, stop talking about Damon. So he comes around the flat later, does Damon. Um, he's there with Leanne. Nick comes in, is worried. Oh, I just feel like I'm repeating myself. There's just so many scenes, it feels like, this week of Damon Leanne doing going, something. oh, Damon, you're and so Nick, wonderful. Ha ha, it's so going. good that you're working with us in the bistro. Nick standing back and saying, oh, should I say something? I can't believe you've forgotten our 25th wedding anniversary. <laughs> exactly. Um, anyway, so D- Damon, um, is, is his phone's ringing. And he's not picking it up, but he won't tell Nick who it's from. But he does say that things are going to be hotting up over the next few days. And Nick says, look, 
I'm not going to tolerate you spending any more time with my son. This is just like Harvey all over again. And Damon's like, to be Damon. honest, I'm not, I don't care about that, that little boffin, he calls it. <laughs> Getting in my way, he's cramping my style. Um, so yeah, I don't, I'm not bothered. And then he picks up his phone and we hear him talking to this, this person on the other end saying, no, I'm not going to cut you in and I won't get off your patch. So he's obviously, there's turf wars going on here. I between. thought it was a dance club. What? No, I won't cut in your dance. Get off my patch. This is my ballroom. Don't think it was that, but you never know. Mark he is into my the dance music, card. isn't he? He's going to be number three. So at the bistro later, um, Leanne's talking about Damon. Nick goes, "Oh, Damon, that's my." Oh, I'm worried. Makes me makes me worry. <laughs> what's What's your problem with him? Leanne says, and Nick says, "I close. don't have one." It's too late for that. Little bit short-handed at the bistro later. So who comes in to save the day? Damon, of course. Um, and also there's a little side story that doesn't develop at all in today's episode that um, he charms Dee Dee, doesn't he? By, he does. by serving her drinks and... Um, yeah, that interesting stuff. I mean... Doesn't he say something like, I've got a business empire that might need some legal representation? I can't like... remember. <laughs> I, look, the, the way that the storyline's going at the moment, and Damon at the end of tonight's episode saying, right, there's only one one more thing going to go down here, and I'm sick to the back teeth of both of you, to be honest, and I'm going to be out. Oh, it feels like that the Damon storyline is kind of nearly over but maybe that's just wishful thinking but the fact he's that this DD every... thread is now dangling means that it's probably quite likely he's going to be staying for longer the spoil I've not seen um any uh spoilers it, no no I mean like the spoiler the spoilers always are like when a when a character is cast there'll always be a load of quotes going I'm me and McLeod and I can't wait for you to meet this new character because blah, 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 blah. And I can't help but think that for once, for once, the the description of a man would be, who's going to turn heads everywhere he goes? Who's quite the ladies' man? And will be running after all the women on the street causing quite the kerfuffle. Kind of get the feeling that this is going to actually be Damon's story because he's gone after Jenny. He's gone after Dee Dee. He's, he's sitting Glenda. quite close to... to um. Yeah, to Glenda. Yeah. He's been sitting very close to Leanne. Yeah. He's, he's like a little... But I don't think Leanne's going to go for him now after, after Friday's it's episode. like a little Randy Terrier. <laughs> well, he's not, particularly. Well, I don't know. He's just it. like... He's, he doesn't he's, seem... he's good at switching on the charm to yeah. get what he wants. He doesn't seem like he's incredibly lusty. No. But he does seem like, if this might be of use to me, yeah, that's I will... Yeah, that's all it is, really, I think. I'll charm this woman. So, it's Friday is kind of the big day for this story, which is another reason why Friday, to me, wasn't so good. But um, he's, he's talking to Sam again at the beginning, because Sam's practising his boxing moves in the bistro at the beginning of the episode. He should and, be doing my Sam, so, so, Yeah, yeah. If you, want a, if you want a good movie about that, on back. Mm. Sam says, have you ever been in a fight, Damon? Um, because I might have to. There's bullies at school. I and... have, over a dog. <laughs> Jacob <laughs> offers his worldly advice, whatever that is, we find out later. Um, Damon also tells Nick later that there's going to be this special delivery coming next week to the bistro, and Nick's mega stressed out about that. And Damon's like, just chill, it's fine. It's going to all go smoothly. I don't want, I'm not going to get any, there's not going to be any police involved. I've... I think later on maybe he talks to I can't remember if it's Nick and Leanne saying that I've I've distanced myself from Harvey, nobody's suspicious of me or anything, it's cool, it's fine. So then we get to see Sam at school being picked on by a bully who makes this this girl, isn't it? And she's making fun of his um boring space presentation <laughs> earlier and he's reading a DJ magazine and she squirts a can of coke over him Rude. which is that's clearly the go-to for bullies in Weatherfield douse your victim in um, in, in, in beverage and um, and then she's... she takes this magazine that's soaking in coke you yeah. don't you'd spit yourself Stick up love pictures are, I mean, the pages are going to be stuck together yeah. and everything aren't they and Sam says Give that back, or I'll wrap this telescope round your head. Yeah, good. <laughs> and no, I don't agree with it. Actually, Nick then gets a phone call from the school, <laughs> heads off, saying that Nan, uh, saying um, Sam's got into a fight. The only question should didn't... ever be: if your kid gets in a fight, did they win? That's the first question. Well, there wasn't even a fight in this case, was there? Literally, Sam's been sent home <laughs> just for threatening this girl. Oh, what a wimp! She it's... she started it. She can't. Take it. She, she can, shouldn't dish it out then. So you, you've you got... That's the law of the streets. You've got Bessie Street sending children home for using sign language. Yep. And Sam being sent home. Little sweet Sam. 
for saying I'll for wrap saying this I'm going to wrap a telescope around your well, head. Well, they should just be that grateful. That is not a send home a bull offence. Well, I'm sorry. It's because the pipes were fine, so they didn't have to think of a reason. Honestly. Oh no, the plumbing's all right today. It'd just be How so convenient the... for Coronation Street if all children were homeschooled all the time, didn't it? That yeah. was they loved the lockdown probably because like should. we don't have to have an excuse well, to have, have children any, at home for the storylines. Kids lines. on the street. They, oh, what yeah, they need true. to do is like have. And like an an Amish version of Corey, where mm. everyone just lives in a community and doesn't ever leave. Oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> and they don't have the internet because they don't seem to have the, uh, except they go viral every now and then. So because Sam threatens this girl with a telescope, and we know that you know he has been deadly with a telescope before. Just ask um yeah. Bildo Van Man about that He's the, got the other year. Yeah. Um, it's not an idle threat. He, so Sam tells Nick that it was a uh, Damon that told him that sometimes a strong threat is better than a punch. And Nick's like, thanks, Damon. <laughs> You've only gone down in my estimation, to be fair. So he tries to phone Damon up and uh, can't get a hold I, of him. I can't condone any you of can't, this. You can't. Leanne says, oh, don't worry. Um, Cl- Damon just clearly made a mistake when he mentioned that to Sam. Don't worry, we all say things we, that we don't mean. We all tell and children to, to resort to violence. Nick says that I just don't want... Damon near Sam anymore and Leanne's like but, but he's, he's such so a charming. but he's such a great guy <laughs> why wouldn't you spanner but nice twist bit of a relief to be fair right in the next scene Nick tells Leanne basically everything Oops. he confesses that he got that money from Harvey that he's now in the debt of the the Gaskell Hay um clan uh, Damon is is getting drugs through the uh, bistro and everything. Wasn't part of the reason why he got himself <coughs> embroiled so deeply with Damon that he didn't want Leanne to find out. Yeah, so he's okay. Bet he wishes that he just said no. No, so they say no to drugs, Nick. Screw off. Mm. Like that. Um, Screw off. Anyway, so see, Leanne knows, and um, as you might expect, not very impressed with this. And Nick says, look, I, I thought Harvey had changed when he offered me that money. And we can't stop now. We're in too deep. Leanne says, look, I've dealt with people like this before. I'm ready to take them on. And she was talking about Harvey, I think, then. But also, I was thinking, a bit of Jess Quigley in there. We remember. Yep. Don't so, forget. Leanne phones up Damon and says, right, I need to speak to you at the bistro. You stay at home, Nick. You've done enough damage. Um... There was that weird scene with Rita. What was going on there? On Wittering Danny. on about yeah, James's boyfriend Danny and his sticky toffee pudding recipe. Unnecessary. I can't. Can I just say I can't believe a woman, Rita's age, who's lived as as long as she has, in the north, doesn't have her own sticky toffee pudding recipe that That's she's not true. cramming down everyone's throats every five minutes. I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, be too harsh on Queen of the Street legacy lady Rita. Well, let's but, stop there then. But that, that scene was we not necessary. So Leanne has this meeting with Damon in the back of the bistro, uh, bistro and getting a Mardi with him. And he says, look, I don't, yeah, I'm not going to get caught. It's going to be fine. Police aren't going to be sniffing around. And she says, well, you know, you... You were trying to defend Jacob and I'm going to defend Sam. But I was just bored by this. I, I didn't get down everything that everyone I said. I really honestly am basically... bored of, like, not just the, the drugs thing, but, like, the Leanne's family being embroiled in drugs thing. Yeah, it's, it was dull. This is dull. She did talk to him about Oliver. She And, and I kind of missed how that came into conversation. Did, no, I know. She She's like, oh, we do everything for our families. And she, it was basically... Except my the, kid who's dead. The gist of it was, after Ollie died, I swore that I would do everything to protect Simon. And now I'm protecting my son. What about Simon, the time blah, 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 blah. That, that Simon's rabbit was burned to death? You should have sworn then. She wasn't even on the show then. She was, because the Simon, Simon's rabbit was called Leanne. Yes, I know, but I don't think that she was on the show. I think, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, Nick comes in. He overhears it. Jacob uh, Damon says, well, the drugs thing's happening next week, whether you like it or not. And then I'm going to be off because I can't be doing with you, Nick and Leanne. You're this boring. Is, you're, you're boring. Um, well, and, they're too much hassle, he says, but we know. And, what and he then means. she, and then Nick gets glared at by Leanne, and she goes, "Man, don't know, boring. Move on, boring." 
I don't know whether we're kind of on our own with this because I know that when Damon came onto the street, lots of people, I think quite rightly, praised. Um, I can't, sorry, I can't remember what the actor is called for his performance. I think he's doing a good yeah. job and he's a kind of interesting character. And the relationship between him They're and Jacob right. was quite interesting to watch as well. Jacob's now gone, so we've lost that element. And literally, it just seems that all we're left with is a utterly bog standard and seen it a million times before story of gangster doing Drugs. dodgy dealings through a legitimate business. It's just it's it feels like there's nothing new about this. And it and you know, I, I like I like Nick and Sam and Leanne. I think this new guy, Damon, is great. I think he's really interesting. I just couldn't give a no, not about not with not when drugs. everything else is Boring. more interesting. Uh, I feel the same way about it as I do about another thing I've just forgotten what it is. <laughs> Thanks but like I hate insight. affair storylines. I feel the same way. Oh, I, I know what I was going to say. Storyline can be good. Uh, oh, the factory need is in trouble, and we need to get this order out. Otherwise, we're going to go bankrupt. I feel the same way about those three kind of storylines. Is like <laughs> factory in trouble, and we're going to go bankrupt. Is usually a short term sort of issue that they solve quite quickly. But, I know, but these kind like of stories, like with Hashim, all of these stories, the are already year. written. They've already been written down a million times. Mm. This this just feels very much like what happened at Speed Dial a year and a half ago. Not so may, maybe Damon's going to drop down dead of a heart attack. I don't know, but whatever. Not interested. Do matrimony. Gemma's wedding was a Ches. On Monday, Chesney's still banging on about his Ches burger, and Gemma doesn't think that they can afford to go chasing his dreams of starting a business. Because Gemma, see, this she's just doing what what all those other men were doing to those women and stamping on their dreams, Gemma. Okay, it can yeah. happen the other way around. You know, whenever you want to f- listen, whenever you want to, um, <coughs> if it, you don't want to push back on me, you're you're the representative. I know. Here. You're the man. I'm the woman. I represent the women. You represent the men. Go Chesney. You make that Chesburger. Don't if you listen you to feel, Gemma. I want to make this clear, and no way will I ever stop you from pushing back on me I want you to okay you have to oh I will okay good <laughs> right so Chesney's banging on like a stupid man <laughs> <laughs> and Gemma's just like no we can't do it people don't want fancy burgers what makes it so special anyway and Gemma tells Paul later that Chesney's stolen this money from their wedding plan for his silly little burger and she's getting annoyed and Daniel comes to collect Bertie because he gave Gemma a trial period in which she would look after Bertie and babysit him for her, him. While he goes off and does other stories. Well, he doesn't actually go to work because he's lazy. And he's so impressed and he wants to make it a permanent thing. And Paul's really excited that this is happening. So he tricks Gemma into going for dinner at Speed Dial, but it turns out he just set up a date for Gemma and Chesney Classic. to have a meal together and he's going to pay. And he also tells them he will pay for their wedding. Some of it. He's going to chip in, he says. He's going to do extra work for Ed and then he's going to help fund their money. Uh, fund their wedding, I mean. And Gemma's overcome and uh, that was, they give him a hug. That was this a really, was really sweet adorable. scene. I, I enjoy, I appreciated this. this is I really like this. Like I thought that was episode. a very, very sweet. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I'm not, not very... I'm not the biggest winter winter uh, foreman fan particularly, but um, that was lovely. I like the way he cares about his sister so much. Yeah. He wants to see her happy. Yeah. Um, on Wednesday, they go off to the wedding fair, the same one that Daisy goes to. And uh, Gemma decides she wants a themed wedding. The theme could be marriage. I know, but, Gem- you know that's we know theme. Gemma doesn't like, you, this Gemma here doesn't like themed weddings. I don't Whenever dislike Whenever anybody them. on the street mentions a themed wedding. I don't dislike them. I think you do what you like. But I also think it's so much money to spend on what you could just have for a birthday party. <laughs> just have a Zelda birthday party or a, I don't know, Coronation Gangsters street and themed. Mole or an 80s themed birthday party <laughs> and have a... A normal wedding. A marriage, not normal... A marriage-themed wedding. <laughs> she wants a themed wedding. I don't know. I'm, I I think if anyone's going to have a themed wedding, it makes sense. Yeah. Gemma and Chesney. Burger-themed wedding. I mean, Kirk and Beth had an 80s-themed wedding. Yeah. So they go and they come back and Gemma wants to ride to the wedding on horseback. Oh, you ruined that for me, didn't you? When we were on honeymoon, I wanted to go horse riding and you're allergic I to horses. I am very allergic to horses, yes. Do you know who else is allergic to horses? 
the Princess of Wales, Catherine Middleton. Oh, wow. I'm and, you know, she didn't let that stop her, did she? She's been <laughs> pictured with horses galore. Well, but if no, they can't have horses, flower goat is the next option, isn't it? Don't... The, 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 do they mean a goat <coughs> that a goat, eats flowers? No, because that's a goat correct. that's scattering flowers. No, goats also. will just eat everything. I think even some of these... I know that Gemma is, you know, a bit crazy and out there and... Um, but I think that some of these things that she, that she was suggesting, even that was a bit to too extreme for Gemma. Although, it, how adorable would it be to have a little goat with flowers? <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, Jessney says, let's just have a normal wedding. Why don't we go to the Rovers? <laughs> and Gemma's sad. And Jenny says, yeah, we, you can get married here. Is that right? I, I, I think that's well, right. Well, get they said. It's not here. I thought it was having the wedding there. Well, they they want to know. get married in May. And then um, Jenny says, oh, you better tell me when because Daisy and Daniel are going to get married in May. There's only so many episodes that we've got in May. And Gemma's excited because she thinks if Daniel and Daisy get married, um, that if they get married on the same day, then they don't have to invite everybody and it'll be cheaper. Mm. And that's sort of like what we thought about getting married on a Friday. So I remember people saying, oh, no, you shouldn't get married on the Friday because then people won't be able to come. And we were like, yep, and? <laughs> <laughs> so, we're um, getting married. We're not having a party. So are, we, do you, are you predicting that we are going to have a, a double wedding for these two I couples? think we're going to have a grudging uh, double wedding on the part of one couple in particular. You reckon? I don't think Daniel and Daisy are going to want to have a joint wedding, but I think they. I think what's going to happen is they're going to have grand plans that are going to get ruined, and then they'll have to gate crash Gemma and yeah. Chesney's wedding, yeah. and they'll turn out to have had a better day than they could ever have imagined with, with, on the cheap. And they'll learn their lesson that you don't need to have an Instagram wedding to to enjoy yourself. Mm. And maybe it will be on the same weekend as the coronation, but. Who can really say? Oh, can you imagine if they do get like a flower girl or, or a llama or what? Now that Gemma knows what a llama is, because that was a bit weird when they decided to write in that she doesn't know what a llama is. Um, yeah, can you imagine Daisy there saying, oh, I suppose I better join in with your wedding and they're like just being a goat a flower nibbling goat. at her wedding dress. and uh... Yeah. I mean, yeah, we said before that, you know, the, the coronation of King Charles and Queen Camilla will be on the 8th of May or something. And uh, that Charles and Diana had their wedding in the same week as Ken and Deirdre originally. Mm. So it would be really fitting if some kind of big um, Barlow-related wed- uh, life event happened at yeah. the same time. I don't, I don't think we've got a date yet. I don't we? know, but sure. I would... We said no. No, we know that it's, it hasn't actually been stated what time... No in May it's going to be Um, also this week just for today's episode we had Eileen returning from her trip to Thailand I was you know I was really surprised to see her back oh you're back but then then it was like oh yeah I suppose you weren't away for that long this is one of those times where it's like they don't really need to make the character go away because there are other characters who've been away for longer than this who haven't actually had an alibi she was here she was on the Christmas episode wasn't she so it was literally five weeks maybe she was away it was nothing but um there was there was more um, oh, silliness with tidying up and oh we're having a bit of a squabble and then Eileen comes in and it's like oh you're back early this what a is surprise what happens to us every weekend when we have someone over mm. we're running around the house Squabbling. tidying up you're, you're giving me orders pretending we're not pigs um, anyway she she takes Todd and George to the cafe to give them their presents for some reason I don't know and she's well, teaching she's, them she's giving them souvenirs yeah she's teaching them um, Thai phrases isn't she and um, George ends up with a monkey key ring and um, Todd I would say gets a better deal with a pair of Mai Tai gloves and like a little punching yeah. pad or whatever it is but um, he's not so into this because he's a lover and not a fighter and um, Ty, uh, Eileen finds them next to the bins outside where Todd, that is a little bit ungrateful. It's rude. It's, it's, he's just as bad as Roy with his mobile phone, isn't he? So um, she sets up this impromptu training session in the lounge of number 11, which, to cut a long story short, <laughs> ends in Todd getting punched out by George when his defence is lowered. And um, to be fair, I, I was yeah not, not necessarily enjoying much of tonight's episode, but when... George socks Todd in the face and he does a little spin round and lands on the sofa. That was kind of funny, I I will admit. So um, the story then just goes into, oh, Todd's hurt his tooth, chipped his tooth, was it, or cracked Cracked it or something, but he can't get an appointment in his normal dentist. But don't worry, 
Sean's dating a dentist, remember everybody? Yep, I do. So um, Todd goes to him instead. And, and if by this the end of the episode, life, his tooth has been fixed. Lawrence would say, I'm an NHS dentist and I'm not taking on any new patients. Well, yes, exactly. Um, I, I was this, I was kind of assuming that when they started talking about Lawrence being the one to fix Todd's tooth, that it would happen on maybe Monday's episode and we get to see Todd going to the dentist and yeah. uh, and, and all the, the sizzling tension between Lawrence and Todd, but... And maybe I'm sure they, that it is all linked. Maybe they but, don't want to throw the profession of dentistry into mm-hmm. disrepute. So the, today's episode, that that particular story just felt like massive filler. Maybe it's going to turn out that turn Lawrence gave like... Todd a different kind of fellow, if you know what I mean. Ooh. <laughs> Bilf. <laughs> Should I tell you what happened with Dev and Bernie talking of filth? Yeah, talking on, about a bit of rough. On, <laughs> talking about ending up in the rough. Yeah. Uh, Friday, it looks like Dev is going Bunk up in the bunker <laughs> to have a charity golf tournament he wants to practice for, but but Bernie offers to be his golfing buddy, and he doesn't really think that. Yeah, she's he can't go and play golf with his friend for he's cancelled or something, hasn't he? Yeah, so she says, "Well, let's go. Let's go together for." A, Blah, 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 blah. So they go. Rumble, yeah, rumble in the rough, she says. They go to the Rovers later afterwards, and Deb's annoyed because it turns out Bernie's actually brilliant at, at golf. And she gets a call from the ladies' golf captain who wants her to join their team, and they're having trials next week. So look out for that. My, my filler alert siren is, is <laughs> good. Is, yeah, like, I love Deb. I tell you what. But what was that? What was that? Big anticipation from me for Bernie's eccentric golfing wardrobe. I mean, I can just see scenes where Bernie and Deb are talking about golf games aplenty. Yeah. They used to go out and film on the in, in the will. golf course, didn't they? I'd like them to be able to. I think <coughs> Bernie turning out to being, you know, an undiscovered golfing talent is about as believable as Lily's um, ascent to football stardom. <laughs> it's like, being, oh, this has just been put just in for storyline purposes. Well, She's, they're actually amazing at this sport. Can't. I don't particularly buy it, but maybe that's just me being sexist and everything. Um, well, personally, I hate golf and I hate bowling. And I only recently found out why I hate both of them. Because I have an issue with my shoulder. That means I'm in pain. And I thought everyone was in pain when they did these things and we all just it's dealt with it. It's mobility you're talking about. It's my impingement. Mm. And I just thought that was how you, how it worked but apparently no, you're not supposed to be in searing pain when you go <laughs> bowling and golfing and that's why I don't like it. So I don't... It I, make me do it. I don't think this Devon Burnley storyline is likely to turn into anything remotely serious. I don't mind. I like I like a funny it's fine, it's fine, whatever. It's fine. I want to see her with a paisley jumper on. Mm-hmm. Or whatever um, they're called. Okay. Checkered. That was quite a long street talk today, wasn't it? Like you said, lots of um, quite serious issues to talk about today. Um, yes, listen. Yeah, listen. I, we've talked about a lot of things that have definitely final disclaimer controversial. Coming. Yeah, I just want, but I just want to say, I, I didn't, I haven't looked up this guy's the, the real life case of this guy, which I think is coincidental. I don't. There's no way Coronation Street planned to have this Max storyline happening at the same time that the verdict for this case was revealed no because there's no they couldn't no, planned no. it and i don't know what the story is and i also just want to point out that we haven't <coughs> seen the videos that this this man created so i can't say whether Maxes there's any like those yeah, yeah there's any you know I, I don't want to make it seem like i'm excusing somebody who's actually been commit found guilty of an actual crime hmm. um so that's just a disclaimer yeah um, but it's really interesting that Corey manages to put their finger on the pole sometimes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Stories. And uh, it's, it's really interesting. And I, I am genuinely, what's the word, baffled about where this is going. I don't know where this is going. And, and so it's got, got my interest for sure. Mm. But on the whole, this week... Sort of very strongly and then it petered off. Mm. I said that Wednesdays was on the low side of of uh, bog standard and today we called yeah. we said it was bobbins not for it being rubbish but it just, just didn't catch didn't do much for me particularly very well so on, on the whole it's still okay yeah it was all right I, I, uh, what, what's your score and I, let, I think i've got one in my head but I'll, I'll let you go first have you got a, a, a thing to call it yeah 
Go on, you do yours. Right, I'm, I'm going to give this. I'm going to give this a solid three wincing alias okay. um, out of five this week because I didn't it was. Want to, it definitely had its high points. I didn't want to steal in case you were going to say three flower goats <laughs> because I'm actually the more I think about it, really into the idea. Three flower goats sounds like something off a weird version of the Twelve Days yeah. of Christmas, doesn't well, it? The third day of Christmas. <laughs> um, so character of the week wise, um, hard. Yeah, it is a little bit. Daisy isn't it? was great. I, I really love Christina. Daisy. I... Christina's really fantastic. Je- Jenny so was beautiful. good for what little she had for the week. I'm I'm thinking I might go David this week, and it's been. Probably a very, very long time since um, I've given David a character of the week. And as somebody who is absolutely has been one of my favourite, favourite characters of Coronation Street, not just of you know, podcast era, but kind of all time-ish, but he's not been on the boil for a long time. And although he didn't necessarily do anything that was astoundingly wonderful this week, um, just the fact that we got to see some some great performances from from Jack and the the prospect of what's to come and him realising that maybe his laissez-faire-ish parenting maybe contributed to the situation and the dire straits that Max has got into. I just found that all I quite refreshing. I really, really want a scene with Matt, um, with David and, maybe, and Gail and maybe Audrey, I'm not sure, Mm-mm. where he apologises to Gail for telling her she was a bad parent because I think there's definitely a generational um, curse with the Platts because Audrey was, you cannot tell me, we didn't see a lot, we didn't see any of her raising Gail because Gail no. was an and, and adult by the time we met her on the show. Audrey was, must have been a laissez-faire parent. Mm. She was, she's, she's still ditzy now. Yeah, she was. She, she's so, we, we've she's heard very hands she off and I think that it's gone in a, it's gone in a cycle with the Platts because I think that, that, um, Audrey was just let Gail do what she wants. And then Gail was, I'm not going to fall into that trap. I'm going to be very strict. And then David's gone. Well, no, that that was too hard on me. Uh, I'm going to be cool. I'm going to be laissez-faire with my child. And now you've got... But that Gail did kind of let... David did walk all over Gail... To some extent. Yeah, but she tried. She was. I. She. She tried. She. She worked. She, can I yeah, just say? She pointed a lot of She fingers. worked harder to correct David than David has worked to correct Matt. Yeah, yeah, I will agree to I'm that. I'm not going to say she's a super strict, but she. She was more involved. Yeah. Than than David has been, and David has kind of gone. You know, I know I was a bad kid, but I think it all worked out in the end. So it all work out in the end with with Max, and <laughs> it's not turning out to to be the same. So yeah, I I I do agree. Yeah, Max is great, but I'm gonna give it to sorry, Dave's great. I'm gonna give it to Daisy. Nice. So well, I'm, I'm because I'm, I'm not gonna say. Oh, I'm not gonna argue against that. But I do want her to ditch ditch the dress. Oh.